You are now listening to the Save Cast, the number one old school RuneScape podcast featuring guests from all across Galenor. To support this podcast, visit the Patreon link in the description. Welcome to the one year of the Sebe cast. Before we get into the actual cast segment, I just have a few announcements. First things first, to all my generous patrons, thank you so, so much for the support over this year. I'm very blessed to have you guys supporting this cast. Today, pledges start at only $2.00. If you've been wanting to support the Sebe cast, now is the perfect time. If we get enough supporters, I won't ever have to run ads. I won't ever have to take a sponsorship. And you guys can just have the Sebe cast be as clean as possible. So please consider becoming a patron. It will mean the world to me. Thank you so much. I want to share some analytics with you guys. So we have right here the top 10 most viewed episodes of the Sebe cast, as you can see. At number one, Alex Sween just hard carries <laughs> hard carries the uh the cast and views at 14,000 uh with solo mission closely behind at 12,000 and then a big drop to 6,000 with mod husky and down all the way to mod zuko the top 10 highest youtube ad revenue uh it comes as no surprise alex ween on number one now i'm not showing these numbers to flex at all i am just showing it here as a reference for this year and let's face it we're all runescape nerds here a lot of us love numbers so i figured i would just bring these up for the top 10 most downloaded episodes on spotify we have solo mission coming in first with 575 foe at 566 and these numbers are actually very linear compared to the very lowest up to the top these don't really differentiate much coming in with the top 10 most comments Iron Vaddy's episode 2 came in with the most comments, 62. Lane at a close second, 56. And then, of course, it goes down to Tasty at 43. Now for the top 10 highest like ratio. Of course, YouTube has gotten rid of the dislike count. But, as you see here, Jack RS has the only episode with zero dislikes very impressive that will probably change shortly because now i've shared it and as you see below bf rocket comes in at a very nice ratio 82 to 1 whale at 79 to 1 jukebox romeo at 70 to 1 mr mammal at 131 to 2 and the rest are seen below guys i now bring you iron vaddy thank you again for one year i look forward to 2022 with you guys thanks All right, welcome to the Sebe cast number 50 with Iron Vaddy. Absolute pleasure to have you on for the second time. It's your second appearance. You were on episode two a, a year ago, literally, uh, well, almost a year ago. I think it was like December. Like to the week, 9th. I think, yeah. yeah. So. No, um, thanks, for, thanks for inviting me back on. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, what what a crazy year it's been. So, like, tell me, Tell me about this year. So from... From last year to this year, how's it been for you? It's been good. The first half was me hunting a mace. Uh, so like RuneScape wise was me hunting a mace. <laughs> and then Fasani's came out. And yeah. then day one Fasani's, I got a mace. And then since then in game, uh, uh, the combat achievement diary came out. And I went for that. And now I've just been hunting an arcane sigil. Like the three big chunks. I've done a little bit of Seractus in between there, but for the most part, it's just been like preparing for next year, next, and raise three. IRL, yeah. however, Sebe Cast has been a, a weekly project I've actually kept up with, which is so surprising. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That, that, is, that is actually remarkable because um, one of the things I wanted to say is that it's like you've gone from just like two duo rambles with, with Duke and I to the number one RuneScape podcast in a year um like even even though it's your slogan it is actually true like so <laughs> know. you know what's funny about that actually is i remember hearing like there's like companies and players and just a lot of different things or like uh esports people that will say like this is the yeah. number one esports like based off of what like what's the number one so i just figured like it was almost a joke to just say the number one podcast because there's no way to measure it <laughs> it's just like just say yeah. number one and you're good 
<laughs> yeah, but you actually are, though, which is hilarious. It's like uh, Olympus, number one Ironman <laughs> yeah. fan for skillers. Like, if you niche down far enough, you are just number one. That is uh, true. So, so there we go. That is I, actually, uh, I actually remember where I was when you got your mace. Um, I was I was working. I just started my new job at the time. And um, it, I, I, ca I caught, like, the start of the 18-hour stream because the signings came out. For, like, UK time, it comes out at, like, 11 a.m. for us. Yeah. So, um Signies comes out. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll watch. I'll watch you do it. Um, and you were just getting into it, learning it, dying a couple of times. I remember the first time you got to like the last phase with the constant sleepwalkers, and like you were like trying to kill them all instead of just rushing <laughs> it, which is, <laughs> which is like really funny now that we think about it. But um, yeah, so I'm like, okay, cool. And then obviously you're still going by the time I go to bed, and then I wake up and it's like five in the morning. My daughter wakes me up again, uh, and I'm like, okay, cool. She's back to bed. And I check my phone, and all I see is like KC87. I'm like, oh. Like he got it so quick. Like how? Like, like in 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 retrospect, like uh, like a couple months on now, uh, like re recall that feeling. Like how how was that to finally achieve that after um, like oh, a year or so of grinding? It was unbelievable. I'm 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 flattered you're asking these questions. By the way, because uh, <laughs> it, it's I don't know. It's it's nice. It's nice to be uh to have somebody else kind of like lead it. I guess. Um, I will say when I got the mace, it was the best feeling. Okay, well, I I don't know about best. It's it's hard to like quantify best, but the most relieving and the most just like freeing feeling I've ever had mm. in this game. Because uh, I was I was actually talking about it last stream just last night about like people were asking me like is is corp worse? Because right now I'm on a two thousand dry streak of no sigils, which yeah. for me I only do corp on stream and I average about five kills an hour on stream because I'm just distracted the entire time. So. Mm -hmm on stream that's like 400 hours with nothing and so it's it, it kind of is similar to like the nightmare grind where it's just like so many hours in between drops but corp is just unbelievably chill compared to it one looks really relaxed yeah and i was one tick flicking the majority of my solos on nightmare yeah and it was just like every day i'd like go live or i'd be playing off stream and i'm just like this is this is hell like this is not fun like everything i'm doing is not it's just it's just a time sink and it was like a like a, a pay attention non-stop for 20 minute time sink and then run for three minutes and then pay attention for you know 20 minutes so it was definitely like one of the most relieving things and it just felt like a new beginning like oh this is like a dark cloud hanging over me and i can finally just move on with the game and now of course now i'm at corp the game works that way though where it's like you're you're going for one thing and it takes like, and then you finally get it, and then you realize, oh, that's not the last thing I needed. I need like all these yeah. other things as well. So, yeah, I, I, I think the the closest grind I've ever had to that is Barrows, which is just incomparable. <laughs> yeah, because um, because I've gotten, I I've completed before average pretty much everywhere I've been to, uh, like depending on the boss, like there's still hours put in and stuff. But yeah, just like seeing that tweet and just knowing how much it like meant to you. To like finish that out and knowing that you could like move on to what you really wanted to do because like it, it's it's just the, the biggest bottleneck in the world but <laughs> yeah. the credit like massive credit to you for actually like sticking with it like beyond like the actual method itself or just grinding out nightmare or even just moving to fasani's which um i've done in my fair share on um like if you just think like beyond that you actually you just stuck out with something for your bigger goal knowing that it had to be done it just kind of it just had to be done um so yeah a credit to you for that for sure that's like that's a crazy one and i i wouldn't i wouldn't have gone to nightmare if it wasn't for your grind like um see like seeing that tweet kind of just cemented in my mind that i also wanted to like get like just complete nightmare and sort that out so yeah you're, you're the reason why i've got my mace maces i guess now yeah l let's hear about your nightmare luck so uh, oh yeah <laughs> you, wait, wait so let me ask how, yeah, are you full completion i'm 11 out of 12 okay uh last thing so i've got i've got one nightmare kc that was to unlock for sunnies and i've got 1500 for sunnies on the dot that's insane and you're missing I, what i'm missing an eldritch okay i'm missing so let me an let me well. let, yes yeah, so let me run it through uh actually okay. i'll just pull up the log now one sec uh i'm in a course that's not unless you're running right next to you um yeah, so the, off, off the top of the dome, I've got six jars of dreams. Um, <laughs> if, so if you know, I, if you know about that, I, I want to just like 
put this into perspective, what six <laughs> jars of drinks do. Because people don't actually know what that means. Like, they just hear six jars. Like, oh, that's cool. A jar from Fasani's is one in 4,000. <laughs> this man at 1,000 KC had six jars. Yeah. That is literally the equivalent of, like, getting six Ellie's in 1,000 KC. That's literally the equivalent. It's, like, insane. It's, like, mind-boggling. It's, like, that should never happen. So, yeah. That's uh, insane. So the first drop I ever got was a Harmonized at 361. Um, and then I got many jars after that <laughs> in between, like, my plate skirt. I got a couple of staffs in between then. And then I went I went pretty dry for a while. Then I got uh, a Volatile, just as I was about to hit 1,000. Um, and more staffs. So I got my helm, so I was just missing the uh, Mace, Pet, Eldritch, and chest plate for, like, quite a bit. Yeah. And then Bingo happened. So like remember when I was like, oh, I'm only, I'm only going to skill during bingos. Like I'll do like that's my that's where my mentality is at the yeah. moment and has been for a while. Like I'll only skill during like Olympus bingos, and I'll do all the PVM and collection stuff on the side. Like as soon as bingo start, I was like just still at Fasani's. <laughs> like it, like it, during like the six hour going into the bingo, I was like, oh, what, what what should I do? I should just, I mean I'm still here. I should just do Fasani's, right? So I ended up just doing Fasani's all through bingo. I think I did like 300 kills over the nine days or something, nine ten days. And uh, yeah, 1264, I got a mace. And then 1364, I got a mace. Insane. And then and then I got the pet on like 1461. And then I got the plate, uh, the, the chest on like 1470 or something. Oh. So like, I so like, I just like just before 1500, I got 11 out of 12. Um, so yeah, my, my luck at Fasani's has been pretty uh, spectacular to say the least. Yeah, in 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 all the wrong and then right places. So um, it, it, even 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 to the point where I've like taken the mace to to Vettian because I needed to do like the hundred kills for it. So I was like, if I lose this, it's all right. Like I got another one. Yeah, that's pretty so, yeah, nice. that, yeah. So that, so that that's my nightmare. But yeah, I, literally all your fault. Um, as are as are the elite caskets sitting in my in my bank right now. So all your fault. But um, that's just uh, the power of the agenda, I guess. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited. no cool. Oh, no. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 been a it's been a funny year for sure. I mean, um, yeah, like I, I was listening back to um our previous cast earlier today, just to, like figure out what we were talking about. That's like a bit of a retrospective, and um, I, I guess it's to all the audience as well, like to to think about what you set out to do, and then what you actually got done. So you want so you got the mace, you wanted the mace, but like you were like, okay, cool. Next three years is six hours of Seracnus on average to complete. <laughs> Five years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, big five years plan. So yeah, it's um, it's, it's quite remarkable that way. But um, yeah, we can talk about like retrospective stuff later. But um, yeah, I guess uh, get into the actual. Part. Yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's that's the preamble. I guess. Let Let me ask, and of course, I mean, we both know what rambles are. This is going to be a ramble. We'll be all over the place. Just warning everybody, but everyone already knows that anyway. I I want to make sure that the audience knows who you are. Oh yeah, sure. sure as sure. a player, um, and so we don't need to go crazy. If you guys are really interested, you can actually rewatch the episode two with Vaddy a year ago. So we didn't even get into it then. That's the thing. Did we really not like what no. were we talking? So like, Dude, so, I really should have rewatched was, that. I swear. It to was God. literally it was literally just another duo ramble. Um, <laughs> just talk and shit, right? Like just yeah, because like yeah. you because what what you what I imagine you set out to do was just like create content that you wanted to listen to, which is just basically like rambles of high level Iron Man or skillers or whatever. Yep. And then the cast like slowly, like and you guys who are watching now can like go back and look at the, look at it as it like forms into it where you get like Valoran, who's like another like high level person interesting to talk to, but that the community doesn't really know much about. And then like you get into like higher and higher profile people and it slowly just starts building into the snowball. You don't really have control over to at a point where like, <laughs> I, like even even though it's like congratulations for doing it for a year i feel like you've got no choice anymore i feel like it's like the cast in it itself is just like its own thing and you're just there managing it if you, if, if you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean like you've got no control over it like I get, like there's gonna be one a week whether i do it or not it's gonna be one a week. <laughs> yeah that's so, really so, it, it is what it feels like that's crazy yeah so um so yeah we didn't even get into like the because you've got like a format now you ask them about their history yeah um you know whether they're a woodcutter fish or a miner and that stuff like uh we didn't even do we didn't even cover that so uh it's like a it's like a whole new world of it's like a, it's like i'm first appearing on the cast but not really it's like the second time let's go into it who are you vaddy for those that don't know i i am an iron man who started playing in 2015 i think um 
my, when when did Iron Man release? I forgot. But October twenty fourteen. I, I, okay, cool. Yeah, so I started playing January twenty fifteen okay. um, off of Boaty's uh, Woman Army series. So um, I I previously before that I was a professional World of Warcraft player, um, and then I was I, I've always played RuneScape basically. Um, I just yeah since. 2004 ish where everyone in secondary school you, you know the job if, yep. if, if, if and any any uk person you've had on the class has told the same story but that was pretty much me even though I, I'm, I'm a tiny bit older but um and then i stopped playing around I, I think literally the day eoc came out i just stopped playing um didn't really touch it again until yeah iron man was a thing even even the new school release i didn't even touch or like recognize or even deal with um it was just like yeah okay it's, it's out but i'm not going to touch it until Iron Man was a thing, um, which really just gelled with me. So I started playing that, and I've been playing ever since, really. I haven't stopped. I haven't really burnt or anything. I've taken breaks to, like, play WoW again, um, to, like, prioritize other things in my life uh, to get to where I am now. But, um, yeah, I'm, I've been playing since then. I'm still playing now, and I'm, I still, still want to play. I'm best. I'm probably best known for my old Ramble series. Um, so it was, like, a tradition that uh, one of the very first Iron Man, Alela, all started, uh, and Osiris as well. Uh, who's famous for the guides now? Um, they would just ramble about their like original Iron Man progress. So it's a completely different meta, like a massive time capsule of what the state of the game was like, what their thoughts were, what the next goals were. Um, and this was really, this was even really rare content in the skilling in the skilling community as well. Like you didn't really get um, commentaries per se. You had Acid Soul, but that was about it. Um, you didn't really have anyone else. So um, to, for an Iron Man to do it, it was, it was like another big thing and. Because Lelador is one of, also one of the most influential people who, on me for playing the game, um, I kind of just wanted to follow in that tradition and make my own Rambo series. And I started that like three, four years ago. Um, and I haven't. And it's, it's been like a once a year thing now since, but it was pretty consistent for like a good year or so. And that kind of covers that period of um, just getting to max uh, as as Zora was becoming less of a thing. Um, things go me think like this, like pre Fossil Island, pre Dragon Slayer 2s type stuff, where um, I would talk about the game in that way and the type of stuff you have to do, show my bank, and etc. So that's what kind of people know me for. Um, nowadays, I just kind of hang out in, in Olympus. I'm, um, yeah, just trying to keep my rank and do some collection log stuff, but um, and mainly just make a ramble once a year talking about a whole load of different things and coming on to the cast, I guess. Yeah, that's that's pretty much me. Awesome, short and sweet. <clears throat> Uh, I want to I want to actually ask a little bit uh, more about like your rambles and stuff because yeah. I've listened to every single one twice, at least. Um, same with Lelador, so I've listened to all his rambles mm-hmm. and his like the podcast and stuff, the Erudite podcast and the Iron Man podcast before. I, I don't even think oh yeah, those two yeah. Um, and just really, I just it's like ancient. It's like ancient history, you know. You're looking back and you guys are talking about. Well, I remember the podcast you were on. You were on with like. I, I I could get these names wrong. Like I don't I don't remember because there was multiple podcasts, but it was like Iron Cub, Say Allo yep. situation, yep. like all or um who else? Uh Parker. Flynn. Yeah, Iron Man Flynn. Yeah, yeah Flynn Parker. And Parker, yeah. Exactly, that was yeah. those those that was the six, yeah. Okay. Um it's it's ancient to me because you guys are talking about like this is like yeah, like what you said, pre Fossil Island. Talking about like what this is gonna do to the game. And it's so cool to see in retrospect, like just you have like the hindsight you know you're like you're seeing what fossil island actually did bring and then you're hearing like these potential things that could you know maybe ruin the game and the same thing with raids one i remember listening to lelador talking to, mm-hmm. and all the other iron men talking about raids one rewards and how it's going to be and stuff and it was just it's just exciting to kind of hear that history before it ever happens so yeah i feel like um like going back and seeing the foresight we had um back then and then just being how just how wrong we were in some cases but like how things also repeat as well because mm-hmm. like this the same com- the same conversation i see always happens now where an update will be proposed we we have the general like we've got the spreadsheets now to figure out how it's going to change change the game um and then we we have like a negative reaction to it because we're grumpy old men apparently who don't want the game changed <laughs> um and it's just the same conversation that happens but the game the game for me at least like hasn't been ruined since then. I think back then I was a lot more cautious about um, not necessarily keeping the game the same because you know that's like a separate thing. But I think it was more specifically around I was set I was set on the way of doing things 
like the the way I would approach uh, playing the game or like getting 200 mil or something was like, okay, this is just the way and anything that deviates from that would, you know, either like like ruin my experience of it or I'd have to like learn something different or I might not like that way. So it might ruin my experience with the game or something. Yeah. And I think like, I think getting a bit older and listening back to those things and um, kind of just made me realize that you can just like shift at the times. Like I've changed fundamentally as a player in terms of my mindset. I'm not a skiller anymore. Um, I do predominantly PBM uh, and that that's something that would never have come out of my mouth like four years ago, three years ago, <laughs> yeah. even two years ago. Uh, just, just not even a thing. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, it's just an interesting, interesting thing to think about when you, when you go back in those things, but that's why they're there though, right? Like that's why, that's why you also need to think about like, uh, not, 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 not you, but like, um, just in general, that's why like, you kind of have to think about the legacy that you're building at the same time. Like I knew, I knew doing those, they would still like, they would still just be there for people to go back and look at similar to what I did with leather doors really. Cause that was a motivating factor to, for me playing the game. Um, and it wasn't that I consciously wanted other people to feel the same way, but I knew as like a secondary tertiary, like byproduct of like logging, like what I was doing, uh, it was primarily for me, but for, I guess like other people could use that too. And, um, and people are still talking about them now. People still like mention my rambles to me in game now. Um, so like they've had an impact. I wouldn't say, you know, it's just like a random Iron Man who, who does rambles. I'm not saying like a, I'm, I'm you know, like had a big impact or anything but it's had something and yeah. it's definitely affected some people so um that, that's always that's always good to know um especially as i'm still playing the game i haven't really i haven't burnt out as many other people have or just quit so um you, 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 i i guess with it i take like the, the the being able to answer these type of questions and talk about the history of it a bit more because other people just aren't around like the, the 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 five other people on the cast they're just not around anymore so you can ask them you, you can, well yeah. covers but um well, i guess for for our for our sake that um or, or just aren't here so yeah yeah um i will say and I, I gotta shout it out <clears throat> yours and lelador's rambles but yours especially hit a little different because you were like aspiring you know you weren't the rank one iron man at the time mm. and so that really like i don't know it was more uh relatable listening to you and honestly they were just they were amazing to listen to and i tried oh, thank you i try to look at um you know the the content i produce which is m a lot of it's just talking like unscripted talking um and i try to look at that with the eyes of a player that i used to be so in fact this is a this is a little bit off topic but i was watching um a streamer learning pvm and it's so interesting to see a player now trying to learn something where you, for you it looks so easy. Yeah. And then I remember thinking back to 2015 when I started a main account. And I remember watching Alfie on Twitch and Foe on Twitch trying to one tick flick, trying to master the one tick flick. And it, yeah. bl I, it blew my mind. Like I, I didn't understand it at all. It made zero sense to me. I saw Alfie like one tick flicking the majors in the fight caves. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, dude, this dude's like risking it all for like he could just slip up, you know, at any at any <laughs> at any second he could just slip up and lose it all, you know? And it's just weird to see the game in a different light now. And I try to remember those times when I played when I was more newbie. Um I I don't know really why. Like this is I, I guess this is kind of like a little bit off topic, but watching your rambles when i was so early game iron man was just awesome and so i try to like embrace i i try to embrace that like my audience could be those people that i used to be years and well years they ago. are that's the thing and it's it's not it's not cringe to say that you have that aspirational part of like the content you put out like it's it's like that's just a general like that, that's an impact you're gonna have on people so you may as well lean into it right yeah like you may as well be like yeah i want to i want to be able to inspire people who um kind of don't know what they're doing kind of mid like super early to mid game iron man accounts um like they're, they're bored of the azaris guide or something they don't want to do 99 fishing so they go look for other stuff and they see you um like just doing what you're doing and they're like wow I want, I want to get to there and then they realize the journey that ha like that you've taken and that's in front of them and it's then their decision to do it or not so yeah it's like that that's just a that's just a reality that if you just play into i feel like it really adds that dimension to your content that other people 
you know, might just ignore and then that's kind of to their detriment, I guess. Like, um, like yeah, because like Leatherdor was that for me. Um, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten into Erudite if it wasn't for him. Like, I think I've told this story before, but I was like streaming on Twitch and uh, like uh, when Monkey Minus Two came out, and I had only just got a Night Island Hunter and I hadn't got my chin, hadn't like used my chins yet or anything, and I I was like one of the only people like streaming, throwing chins in the tunnels. And I had like I was I had like three people in my stream and Leatherdor was one of them. <laughs> just like see, he's just out here scouting out different methods and stuff. Like, guys, crazy shout out to you. But like, um, yeah. And then he's like, yeah, you should join. You should join our clan because you seem to know what you're doing. And so I didn't. But um, and yeah, if it, if it wasn't if it wasn't him reaching out, then I wouldn't be here. So, um, and in in kind of in the same reaction, it's like, wow, you're that guy who I'm looking up to, who's coming down to me to like. It's it's like there is no there is no like there is that that isn't really in play in terms of like oh, i'm you're not better than anyone else but people kind of see you or like uh aspire to be you and um in and and, and i'm just realizing how cringe this sounds talking about medieval clicking game but <laughs> you, you know you know what you know what i'm trying to say right? yeah no absolutely you know what yeah. i want to ask is i want to ask a little bit about lelador say aloe and i'm just gonna throw in iron higer Okay. Um, so three really well-known Iron Men. Um, you know, Lelador was rank. They've all been rank one Iron Men at some point. Iron Higer, <laughs> of course, is rank one now, um, and he's going to finish uh, the game. Well, the game two hundred mil all in skills. But I, I want to kind of ask about like how it feels to have those players. Like for me, Lelador and Sayala were both absolute legends. I looked up to so hard. And Lelador having burnt, and then Aloe having burnt, which I never expected. I really didn't, um, you know, months before, like, leading up to it. Obviously, like, there was a time period where you're saying he was burnt and stuff, and then it eventually happened. Mm. But, um, I yeah, don't know. I, I can talk. I can talk about all three really, and yeah. kind of like it's in kind of. I, so I've got I've got a way of thinking about it. So if you start with Lelador first, right? Um, the word to describe him in in like the Iron Man mode is pioneer in 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 some ways he really paved the path forward for methods for um mindset for just like showing that it's actually possible to do like let like shout out to leslie as well who was also who's who's actually the first person to max an iron man um so like definitely definitely shout outs to there but like leather in terms of like the actual impact and have that long lasting rec one and um i mean i only passed him like like six months ago on the high schools, which like kind of just says it all really. So yeah, definitely a pioneer in terms of really taking skilling, the main the, the, the main mentality of skilling to Iron Man mode, because he was a he was a main skiller before, right? So he took that mentality over and really applied it to the self-sufficient game mode and really took took it to heart. So he showed it was possible. Um but that was purely like in a in a skiller frame of mind, if that makes sense. Like he still did his Zora, he still did he still integrated PVM into what you would what an Iron Man mode look, kind of like meta meta looks like like what you how you should approach like leveling everything and like a like an all-encompassing like meta level um but then i think Allo is like the second stage of that of that history where he is pvm focused but from that you gain so so much other like so many other resources and skills and um and, and, and xp from that the way it's, it's definitely a much more integrated streamlined version of how to play the game mode yeah. So he'd do all of his raids, he'd do all the different PVM and things, he'd kill loads of KQ, but it was all, like, it, like it wasn't quote-unquote efficient to do, but it was like 0 0.8, 0 0 0.9, 0 0.95, it was pretty much like bang on, right? So it, it was like, it, it basically demonstrated, it, pioneering another way, the, what I'd call, not, this is not derogatory, but it's like the solitary way of playing, essentially. Yeah. Where you PVM, but all of the resources that you get from PVM, you just feed back into skilling and, and getting your XP from there, right? So, um, and that, that's that's kind of the way I'm playing now. So those are like the first two stages. You've got the like, you got like the pioneer with the skill and mindset, which is all you really had back in 2015 anyway, because no one else there wasn't the PVM to integrate into it. Into it, all you had was like skeletal wyverns to start off with. Yeah. Then Zora, Zora was like literally the first one that came out. Even um, Slayer was like just not yeah, profitable. Exactly. Like you got, yeah, you got a whip. Next, nice. next, and gargoyles weren't a thing. Nope. Um, among other things. So, 
yeah, all you, all you, all you have is like Kraken. <laughs> like good luck with good luck trying to and the drop table is still the same now. So like obviously you, you could see that wouldn't be that useful to yeah. like macro sense it. Um, then you, but then as as content starts coming out, which actually feeds back into your account build and what you what levels that you can gain, even pre ninety nine, post ninety nine, um, Allo is really the pioneer of that method where you do all your PVM. You, yeah, as I said, I think Higer is like a synthesis of those two. So not only is he Finnish, which is just uh, like good RNG in life <laughs> in general, um, you, you also have like one hundred and seventy IQ spreadsheet making. You have. Uh, he's a sleep deprivation scientist. Like, you just go for it. Um, the guy, like, does what he's... If you check his high scores, like, he's got all the PVM, he's got all the items, he's got all that, but his, he's really just refined it to where it's a perfect balance between the two. You're never, like, you're never skilling too much, but you're also never just only doing PVM. It's a real great synthesis of only killing, say, Prime and Supreme on your DK task for your Dragon Axes or something. It's only, like, going so far into a boss where... Um, you get enough resources for it where you then you put it back into pvm it's like having a perfect or skilling order of things it's um stopping shy of like 200 mil just so you can get the extra like like if you look at higer's high school yes. now he's got like he's got like six seven skills which are like 20k uh, away from <laughs> it's yeah. 20K. but like that's 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 that mentality of like i will get this eventually it's just going to be through zero time stuff that I pick up, right? So it's just never capping stuff, making sure that everything's as like as, as streamlined as possible. So like out of those three, yes, they've all been rank one, but they've all been rank one in different ways, and they've all kind of been the epitome of how you play that game mode at any one time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I I feel like just I feel like I'm 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 a bit between, um, Higer and uh, and Allo at the moment where um I I was I was full Lelador for like quite a while, and I think too long especially considering like i only started learning cox like four years after it came out so i guess i'm like four years too late to it um in terms of like how to approach how to approach like a more holistic want to complete everything type of game mode um but i i would say in between like aloe and, and higer um maybe closer to higer nowadays because um i'm in the skilling discord like secret chat i see all like the spreadsheet discussions and things i'm up to date with all the different stuff and things but where, where we'd wait along that line along that scales and i guess this is something like if you're listening to this like comment in town comment down below so i've explained like how with your iron man how to actually approach the game where would you say you are on that scale between lelador and higer which is actually like a sick question if you think about lelador and say Allo or lelador and higer uh, or all three wears. Allo's like in the middle, as it were. Yeah, um, I mean, everybody can ask themselves that. For me personally, it it really is. Uh, it, I think I relate more to Allo than anybody else. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's, uh, that's that's a really good question though, because like, um, yeah, those th those three for sure are are the, like the the three I would think about to really like personify the, those those ways of approaching the game. And you you can see you can see their impact in how people like talk about how they're playing the clans that they're in the type of things that they do their priorities their goals like the, all three of these people have indirectly or directly influenced the way that uh, thousands of people play their Ironmans now so yeah it's no small feat yeah no it's insane and then I I think honestly well okay let me ask you first who is the greatest Ironman skiller um. I don't think I can answer that question because I'd have to think about it. I will say, like, so how, how 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 do you how do you define skiller? There there is no really there there is no perfect definition for it. I just think when I when I think Iron Man skiller, I think Iron Higer. Mm. Like that's just who I think. Like I think I, like best Iron Man skiller. It's him mm. because he just keeps going. In fact, he put in the best ever agility month. <laughs> that was during bingo yeah the dude's over four bill xp like it's it's at the time when you should just start coasting you know just like kind of like you know finish the game and just kind of like relax a little bit uh, you know just he, ease he, off a bit no, he 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 is finishing the game like that's what fins do they just play the game no and but you would think for a normal person you're gonna finish and you know you're gonna finish so just ease off a little bit you know you don't need to go like that hard but the man put in 50 mil agility xp in a month yeah. Like that is unbelievable. Like <laughs> that is unbelievable. That's like yeah, mad, yeah. that's just crazy because it's not even just running rooftop sleep depriving. It is hallowed sepulcher, which, you know, arguably after that much XP does become very brain dead, but it's still like effort and clicking and like 
a little bit of concentration the entire time, which is insane. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if you've seen like the current meta for Seth, but it is pretty much like rooftops right now. It, yeah, are, it does get to that certain, point. Yeah, like if like first floor, first three floors are pretty much solved, and then like you got to think for a bit on floor four, and then floor five is like the same pretty much. So yeah, yeah I I, um, I think I think I guess when I'm looking at it, I'm thinking of floor five. You know, you make a a slight mess up within. You know, 500 hours of doing this, you're going to have some mess ups in it. I just imagine how tilting it's got to be to just like, fuck, like, God damn it. Like I messed up like last second, you you know, you understand you're doing this for an entire month straight. And like just the whole mind, I, I don't know, like your mindset's just got to be for me sleep depriving that much in general would just put me like, I'm just like, no, I quit. Like I'm not doing this. You know, but that's, that's, that's the difference between us and Higa. It's like he sits up straight. He just, he's not tilted. Like yep. he's not reclined. He's just like he just does it. <laughs> he's just gaming, and that's <laughs> why I gaming. consider, and that's why I consider him the greatest because he just keeps proving to everybody that he's the greatest. Like, yeah, that's that's my opinion, of course. And I like, do, like, do you do you value opinion. recency or history? Because like, I value recency. everything, but I also the biggest thing I value, I think, is consistency. Of like, there are beast skillers. There have been beast skillers. Amazing. But I think yeah. what it really comes down to when I think skiller is like those that don't give up. Yeah. And, you know, some people's goals were never to get 4.6. I never heard Lelador once say like he's no, never, going never. For, for 200 mil all. He just said he enjoys post-max skilling. Yeah, there were certain skills I don't think he was going to touch. And back then, 200 mil all wasn't feasible. I mean, it was in 20 years, you know, as an as an Iron Man getting like 20 k year plan. Yeah, 20k. Yeah, whatever it was, 13 year. Was that what it was? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like now you see yeah. Tiger finishing in 2022, and yeah, he'll finish next year for sure. Um, he's got like he he can coast like runecrafting and mining basically. Yeah. And still finish like incredibly strong. I know Dids his um, is he he wanted rank one 200 mil herb lore, which he got, and now he's like just slowly like um just coasting coasting back. And then there's going to be a couple of other people who come up in, in that point. But um, one one thing I want, like one thing, I guess like a goal for me next year is to actually try and now push for top page. I feel like I've had like a year of a year of like good solid PVM stuff um, where like I, I've I've gotten I've completed Cox, I've completed Nightmare. Um, like there's going to be some PVM things coming out next year, which will kind of push me in that direction. I think um, when next comes out, we can talk about next if you want. But when next comes out. Um, and like I get Torva and I get two max hits at Vorkath, I'm gonna be very happy. Yeah. And then like, I feel like that. I feel like at that point I can start actually properly thinking about going for it properly. Because um, because it's I, I definitely will get to, like finish top page if if things keep going because they're just a consistency as consistency aspect of it all. But like as, as sometimes my mindset just kind of feels like it's slipping away at the same time. So um, it's definitely something I'm thinking about. But yeah, in terms of the top, like that's pretty much nearly locked. I think unless like something drastic happens. Um, there's like pretty clear divisions between who's rank one, two, three, four, and five at the moment. Yeah. So, well, actually, no, like six to three is um, like uh, kind of a up and down, but a yeah, a bit of a blur, but yeah, really depends. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's yeah. What, what was your top rank that you've ever had? Uh, in like in the OSR side scores, page. no, no, second, no EHP, no anything. Second page, okay. I didn't, I, I think I was like 37, 30. No, I was 20, I was. Wait, have I been top page? I, I don't, don't, I don't know. know. I I, I, I know. think I like part of me thinks that I've been top page, but that's just me thinking that I have. Yeah. I think I think like for safety and someone some history nerd in the comments can, can check me on this <laughs> one, but I think uh, <laughs> he's got like the webkive.org of like <laughs> yeah. every every single like, <laughs> like to be honest, right? If someone does have that, that's actually pretty sick and you should share that because that'd be really cool to just like go back day by day. Um, someone should start doing that from now, but it might be too late. That um, would be sick. Like a, a, imagine like a little yeah. graph that shows exactly who the top 25 players were at any given day. I think like, might have like Temple or CML might have that. So I might really? be able to check actually. Yeah, yeah. Because like they, they do like the timestamps and things. Like that's you might amazing. have to go, you might have to go on CML for it. Yeah. Because um, that, that, that was the one people used before Temple. Um, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll check my CML soon um and, and say that but i think it was like 26 like 27 something like that okay so i've i've heard your rambles and for those interested iron vaddy i will like i'll have your youtube linked in the description he has oh, thank you beautiful 
historically relevant, like just like just cool stuff about Iron Man. And like Vaddy has always been one of those top players where it's like you listen to his videos and back then like those were the metas. He would talk about EHP changes and stuff. So if you guys are curious, go click on his links. Um I think Okay, so I, I, I heard your latest ramble. It's like something about this game. It's like you've found a balance to the point where mm-hmm. this is now a game. Like this is just something that you can just play and you can enjoy it. And it's almost just like a never-ending progression to eventually get 200 mil all, to eventually, you know, get all the items and stuff. But there's no like time limit on it. It's just just do it like whenever. It's just this like never-ending thing. And I thought I thought I just thought that was awesome. And yeah, like, why, 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 why pressure yourself? It's but like I'm like so I'm 30 years old. Uh, I've got a 19 month old kid. I've got a wife. I've got a professional job. Um, but I'm still like mo- more motivated than ever just to like keep this on the side or like zero time or or do whatever. And, and that's mainly because like it's like so, some might say like psychologize it a bit. Some might say it's like just loss aversion. But for me, it's like I don't see any reason to stop right now um because it's I, I just find it really just like charmingly enjoyable it's like a, it's like a nice quaint like satisfaction i get from just playing this game which i wouldn't which i don't really get from i don't really get this type of like feeling from anywhere else like obviously i get like immense love and uh gratitude from my family and like i'm achieving well in my in my work and my studies are all over now so that's all fine but like this this has been a constant part of who who I who I am and who I've become over the past what yeah since two thousand and four, so that's fifteen years or that's like that's half my life. Yeah. Runescape's been with, been been at least a, like in in my brain or knowing what it is. So like to, I feel like now it's like what what's what's forty five years or sixty years. Like it does seem doesn't seem like much to me to be honest to like keep it going and just like see how long it can go for. So I I definitely felt this during when when I did my Fasani's grind as well. Like at at no point did I burn. At no point did I feel like, oh, I need to stop doing this because I'm getting tired of it. Or, um, I mean, that's credit to the actual piece of content itself. But at the same time, it did like I, I, I at each kill I got more excited to keep going back, which is like an inverse of burn. It's like a you know I, I was cooking, but I was yeah. <laughs> oh, like yeah. It reminds me of Corp. Honestly, it's like every kill yeah. you're, you're not even getting anything, but you know it's inevitable that something's gonna come. Yeah, so like it's a bit bit of like stats one one. Like each going for drops is um is is like is what what you call like plus EV. It's like plus effective value, right? Like you're more likely to um to get the drop than to go dry. And like the the, the chance of getting the the chance of going dry like lifetime is just one one out of three. Like if you take if you just take like whatever grind you apply it to, the chance you're uh, not complete it by the average time you should complete it is one out is is, is a third essentially yeah. so two thirds of the time you're not you're you're, you're gonna complete it by the time you, you expect it to or, or less so it's it's worth going for everything anyway and with that in mind grinds don't really become grinds anymore they're just inevitabilities like the the, the drop is guaranteed you just need to go out and grind it and do it it's not as if like you're doing it and there's no chance of it happening so you're wasting your time or yeah. um you're doing it for no reason like you will get it eventually um and and it, it is it is an absolute freak accident to go anything i think more than 5x dry yeah. i think um i think f- f- from where my mentality is at the moment if i go 5x dry on something i feel like it's completely fine cuz really that's kind of like just one out of 100 of you, of it being you yeah and like that's it's those, gonna those be you odd. eventually you know? it's like it's gonna be you for like you've got over 100 grinds i mean it's not obviously not how stats works but um if you take a layman's approach to it like you've got like 100 grinds individual things in front of you um if you really just take that snapshot and do the stats on that then yeah one of those things you're gonna go at least 5x for yeah. um just 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 hope it's not caught but at the same time if it if it is just know that it is inevitable like travis got his arcane today yeah um and you know that wasn't the biggest grind. It wasn't like a Jack RS grind, but it was still a grind for him, right? Yeah. Uh, I still I saw like the satisfaction and disbelief in his face and stuff. So, you know, with, with a mentality of this is inevitable, I just need to go out and do it. It turns it from a slog to something you can actually just look forward to, and then you can actually start appreciating the uh, the aspects of the grind which um, you can control and, and are actually you can actually improve on. Like for like for for Sani's for instance, I would like properly go for speed times just through my normal kills. Sometimes I would do like the grandmaster task just as as it is, 
like I've already got it, but I may as well go for like five, six kills, see if I can do it, just to make it more fun. Yep. Um, and yeah, you, you get you get to play around with these things because um, you turn that into the actual primary goal, whereas the secondary thing is the drop. Because again, that's inevitable; it's hundred percent going to happen. You just need to like do and do it enough to get it. Like um, I think to next next is Tebow. He's got his Tebow this year. Um, what was the KC on that? Somebody actually had mentioned that. And I... 4,500. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. it's a good thing that we haven't seen other Ironmen go extremely dry because it is such a long hour grind that yeah. you just don't see it. But it will happen. Like other people will go that dry. If it's they it's got to. Apart. It's yeah. got to. Yeah, it's inevitable. So there's no point um, complaining about it. There's no point um, celebrating an early completion that you didn't earn. It's just like a, you... you you need to celebrate the grind itself and you're inevitably going to get it anyway because that's just how the game works. It's not like you do 2,000 kills at Nightmare and then you now unlock the potential to get the mace. Yeah. Or, or like if you got it before, you kind of cheated or something. Like That's how people feel. Like They're like, this wasn't meant to happen. It's like, <laughs> no, it was. At that point, you just rolled it to get the, like, the drop. Like That's just how it was meant to happen. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. Like, uh, I, I, I watched Behemoth. Uh, shout out to Behemoth. And... Um, like all the, all the different clips and things are like people like freaking the fuck out over like drops and stuff. Part of me is just like, that's that's really cool. You can get emotional about this game. Like I really see the passion in it. But part of me is like, you know, that was just like meant to happen. Uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> and, it's weird and it though an, because <laughs> we do get, I mean, I personally get emotionally attached to some things. And I start, for example, the nightmare grind that was really getting to me because yeah. it was just like, it was it was real. It was nine months of one tick flicking nonstop every single day and i couldn't really do anything else because nothing else would give me that fulfillment of trying to go for this item that i really needed yeah and so it does be start, it starts becoming emotional from a third pet from a third party perspective i'm seeing i'm a drum right now he's going for his first infernal cape okay. and he is doing it he's in the middle of it he's in the thick of it and he sees it as this is hell like this sucks i and he got to the healers at zuck yesterday and i'm like oh cool I'm like, dude, it's a matter of time, but he, he still sees it as like, this sucks. I have to get to that point again. I might fail again. I, it's feel, like, I feel like I feel like it's a bit different though, because it's skill versus it RNG. Is an, yeah, yeah, that, but, but, that but is, at the same time, the, men, the mentality does carry over. Yeah, you're right. Where it's um, that emotional, but when you see it, it's like as a drop, like for the mace itself, like somebody else could be watching me doing it, and they're thinking in their mind, it's gonna come. It's a drop rate. It's like it's a chance. Like every chance is the same. Like every kill. You're getting that same one in twelve hundred chance, yeah. which is what it was, and so you just kind of see it unemotionally, and you're like, "Oh, I, I, well, this is going to happen eventually," you know. But for me, in the moment, I just thought it would never happen. I was like, "This is just, this is like a lost cause. Like every kill, I'm not getting it. Like this sucks ass." So, yeah, I, like I, every like both both my Tebos and both my Maces, like I never expected to get them. Like I'd I'd hide on, on in Cox, I'd hide the light, I didn't make any like special tebow light and anything and the first one i got was just like like fine i'm i'm what like like praise jesus i'm one of the lucky ones because <laughs> like when, when you're in the same clan as someone who's gone like 4.5 x dry for one you just you don't like well you can have all the stats like in your mind you can have the mindset like the grind set you just like grind it out but at the same time you're just like holy shit please don't be me yep that like, was me I with my wanna... scythe I, yeah. I went five i went five and a half times the rate of a weapon and then Ooh. but getting that scythe was like Okay, I'm no longer Mary J. I'm no longer anybody yeah. that's going to go 3,000 yeah. dry for this thing. Thank God. Like, it's, yeah. it's oh, that relief. I am, um, a goal for me next year is to actually, well, I need to do it for elite CAs anyway, but I need to start going to TOB because this red offhand is not treating me very well right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to get that thing. That, like, it, does... I, it's, it was so funny, like, when I completed Nightmare, I'm, like, rocking up, uh, running up to Fasani to, to round up to 1500, and I'm, like, I've got full Inquisitor, I'm, like, max strength, got the mace out, and I've just got, like, a gold trim Dragon Defender. <laughs> like, the silliest the, fucker the, in the world. The, it's the mustard defender, just a little bit of mustard spray. Yeah. It. It's like, oh, I spilled I spill my hot dog, sorry, guys. So this, this is a good thing for you, wearing the Tome of Fire alking here, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, mean, have I, haven't, I haven't been alking because I've just been clicking and chatting. So. <laughs> I, I try to alk when I can. Um, okay, let's talk about TOB and let's talk about combat sure. achievements. So combat sure, sure, achievements sure. were the big was the big update. I would argue. I mean, Fasani's hard mode and uh, group Iron Man, and of course, combat achievements. I think were like the four big updates. I think so. Yeah. Um, 
I want to talk a little bit about TOB. So let's just cover TOB first. TOB is team based. It's one of the few things that you just need to have teammates for. Mm -hmm. You don't need to, but you need to. So I don't really have an opinion on hard mode TOB because uh, I, I couldn't tell you the difference between normal and hard, to be honest. Um, like I know there's like a couple of things. I know bloat looks different, or et cetera, et cetera. And it seems like but, something you do post scythe as well. So yeah, like I, that, that's that's what I've heard. Like I feel like if you if you rock up with like a the dragon scimitar equivalent, the crystal dragon scimitar, then you're kind of like trolling. Yeah, um, kind of. Where you, you yeah you, you need a scythe <laughs> for it. So. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 definitely something out out of my, out of my reach. And um, I, when when I'm when I'm finally pushing for GM, I'll probably like start going for it after I get a scythe. But yeah, with normals, I feel like it's okay to have like uh, and <laughs> um God, but there was a uh, on the on the Twitter post for the Revenant boss, right? There were a couple co couple comments from people like, "So how are I meant to kill this?" And I'm just like, "You're not." <laughs> like it's not everything has to be for you. Yeah. Uh, not not every, not everything has to be in the style where it's accessible to everyone. Like, I I want exclusivity and um and like speciality in some aspects of 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 the game where it's like for a certain type of per player or person. Um, like if I want to do the content, I need to be able to go to where that con like meet meet the content where it is, not have it come down to me. Yeah. It seems like such a a weak like a, a weaker mindset to have like things must be uh design well yeah things must be like brought down to my level rather than me aspire up to that level like one's much more aspirational and one's a bit more like uh down downer as, as it were so absolutely um for lack of a better term so with, with tob like I've, I've, I've got free kc but they were all very chill and fine and relatively easy and i learned it quite quickly i think story mode helps a lot for me as well like i'm gonna when i actually start going back to tob because i need to do the, the the diaries for them anyway i'll just go back to story mode i like story mode as, as an aspect of it especially especially given what tob is i think because there's like the gate of actually having to be a group and you don't want to rag your group when you've got like a when you're a learner and a self-admitted one where you can actually practice mechanics and, and test things and, and and try out the pog tank and stuff like um i went into my kc kind of knowing what i was doing so it was all fine like i only died like a couple times just like through stuff you only get when you're below 10 kc and then, then it's all good yeah. like um like and, and the stuff you couldn't do at cox as well because it's like infinite deaths like it doesn't be yeah. you. so you can it's like a sandbox in the vault itself where you like you complete the sandbox in in, in in a good way but with tob if you actually die you're just gone so yeah. um i guess i guess story mode was, was a good bit part for that um but yeah the, the 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 only reason why i don't do tob currently is because of that team aspect of it but that, but i'm okay with that um my my schedule and the way i can play the game just doesn't really fit into um like in, in, into actually getting a team together i might have to drop it like there's p2 to go sort out something for the family uh and, and that's fine i've just got the red mustard defender and I'll, next year on I'll, I'll work on it maybe i'll go to 416 or something yeah I've heard, I've heard good bad things about it but um yeah it's just one of those things really yeah speaking of 416 i actually think it's I did a lot of 416 and I actually enjoyed it. It was just because oh, cool. I would feel like I want to do a TOB or three or four. Boom. I can yeah. just go to 416. Uh, of course, it's a lot easier when you're the high KC because then other, other high KCs join you. But for the most part, it, there was no big issue. Occasionally you wipe, but like, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's fine. That bad. I've got, I've got like a decade of pickup group experience in well. Like, yeah, no, I, don't feel, I, don't, I feel like no, nothing can face me yeah. with the shit that I've seen. So yeah, that's all fine. Like when when you when you when you're thinking about like how how could you not uh, like understand how to do the game here, and then then you then you see like you, you see what it's like. You're just like, oh damn! Like there was a, there's a learning curve there, but then, then you realize you were there as well, and it, and it's all okay. Yeah. Okay. You know I mean? Combat Go achievements came out. And I, I have not talked to you about this. So what do you think of the difficulty of Grandmaster? And what do you think of just the variety of tasks? Do you think they nailed it? Do you think there's things they could have improved on? Yeah. So I, again, listen back to the old ramble. This is what we were talking about. And combat combat achievements were the, one of the main, was actually like the straw that broke the camels back for me learning how to do Cox, essentially. Because uh, I knew Blowpipe Nerf was coming. I didn't want to have the worst gear in the game i didn't want to like be penalized for it so i thought okay get a tebow before this happens and ends up doing that um i think and I, and I still think this i think gm should have been harder 
I think I think uh, and and this and just just in terms of the hardest tasks or time tasks or like the not not Casey because Casey's tasks don't count as as we all know yeah um, but like in terms of like the endurance ones. I like to see them push the envelope a bit, maybe like just just a bit more. Like for signings, go from five to eight, for example, where like you you are you really are pushed for it, or um, things like sacrifice an inferno cape for master. So like you had to get two KC or something before you kept going, even though like ten KC was a thing, or uh, sub sixty, sub sixty five, or like gets like fifty eight or something to really just like push that envelope a bit more because um, I'd I'd want it, I, I I'd want something aspirational, but like pretty much barely out of reach. Uh, again, similar to what Inferno was at the start, where like you look at it and you're just like, "There's no way I'm doing that." And I, I think, like in 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 the same ramble, you're like, "I'm only going to go for elites." Yeah, all all I need is elites, and that's fine. And then like here you are with GML, I'm like congrats to you, like, that's great. Um, but, but and and that, that's like I had like it's a bit of an aspirational thing. But I, in my, in my mind, I always I think it would have been, been healthier for the game and for the higher level community to have something just like really differentiates yourself from like everyone else yeah um and i and i feel like really like t- like 0.2 0.1 benchmarks of like player base really does that for people so like, i don't know i don't i don't know how many people have gm helms now and i could be talking about my ass like that could be where it is at, is at now and i'm just like asking for something which is unattainable or like it's disproportionate to how many people have it but um that's at least the approach it was i, I was thinking about until the difficulty yeah, and that's that's fair. I actually think just so just as a counterpoint, food for thought. What if Grandmaster is leveled very well, and the the true people that want to push themselves beyond, like so, think about it. Like this isn't like a third party thing. Like Grandmaster, it's like it's in the game. It is a part of the game. It's a it's an achievement diary to do Grandmaster. I think. Me personally, I think Grandmaster really nailed it. Of course, there's a little bit of tweaks that I would have preferred. You know, a sub 60 Inferno actually would have been perfect, uh, in my opinion. But at the same time, a sub 65 allows somebody that is just incredibly dry on a Tebow to potentially get that time, where like a Tebow would almost be essential for a sub 60, you know? Um, mm. it, it's almost like this is an achievement diary and the people that really want to push themselves can make their own arbitrary thing. Like I know, uh, uh, oblivion's done that. They have their diary. And of course there's people that compete for speed running. I think speed running is one of the biggest tells of yep. somebody that's talented. I look at Addy Khan, he's pushing, he got a sub 47 minute Inferno, which is absolutely Ridiculous. disgusting. Ridiculous. Yeah. That dude. Okay. I got to give a shout out to Addy Khan. Yes. I've been watching his streams. He's, well, first of all, he's always pulling over 300 viewers, and he's doing – he makes the Inferno look like a breeze. He started – okay, for a lot – okay, again, I am talking to I, – I had mentioned this. I was like – I said Adikon started wave 63 at 20 HP. For me, that's just like asking to die. Like, I'm going to die. I'm starting <laughs> this wave at 20 HP. What the fuck am I doing? And then somebody called me out. They're like, well, like, you know, you'll be fine if you do. Okay, I'm, I'm talking to the 99.9% of people that would never start Wave 63 at 20. That is insane. He makes it look like a breeze. He knows when he's about to be, you know, chance. Like, he 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 gets rid of those chancing opportunities. He knows when to eat, when to tick eat, when to do things. And it's just beautiful to see. And, like, I don't think Grandmaster ever had to take anything that far. I think Grandmaster for Jagex was to... You know, provide some content that is throughout the entire game. You have to go back to these bosses, learn them in different ways. Of course, there was a lot of things. Okay, so I know I'm just kind of going all over the place. One of the things that I really wish could have happened, but it's unfeasible because Iron Man's in the game, is something like go to Bandos, kill Bandos in three seconds. Something that just requires <laughs> a team. You know, like so it's like being a five-man Bandos team and like have Blow nobody take any damage like something like that where it's like holy shit like okay we got to coordinate this thing like we all of us got a dh bomb like first second or things like that that are unfeasible because iron man's in the game but so the only team content we really got was chambers and tob everything else was solo which selfishly mm. i enjoy because i like doing things solo but there was yeah. so much more that could have been pushed beyond oh go kill two grardor without taking damage like Imagine kill five Grardor without taking any damage from any minions. Yeah, that's the stuff I'm talking about. 
like you you've got the framework there like you've got the different categories i think just pushing the numbers just a bit beyond like what might yeah. seem possible and just seeing what people can do because um people are doing absolutely ridiculous stuff on this game um and yeah it it, it should go it, it you should be able to like say yeah i can do eight nine Fasani ki kills without leaving um and have that be like a proper gm thing to do yeah um because because that's like like that that when you, when you when you say that and like having done that a task and knowing how like close i cut it or like how much endurance that was i was like oh that that seems like a bit but then i know it's possible it's just like if the if that carrot on the stick was there and the achievement was there then the incentive's there to go for it so i think i think they really struck the balance the balance of that right in terms of the framework and i'm excited to see um because the, the sunny ones ones came out quite quickly after uh after the sunnies came up when the cas came out yeah. um so i'm excited to see what next ones look like i'm excited to see what um two of mask ones look like uh for, for next year i know there's two big things that are coming out pvm wise um and just see how they integrate into it because so there is an opportunity to like you know like some gms are harder than other gms for example yes um so like in terms of like what the hardest task in the game is for example in, in like maybe with, with toa it's like do everything with all the invocations or like none of them or something whatever whichever way it goes yeah. um and that could be like balance really difficult or something um yeah that, that'd, that'd be good to see because because it's always there's always room to expand it and um part of part of it needing to be hard is like in totality like collectively as long as you've got gm then um you can show that you've done something quite hard um, not every task has to be like pushed to the limit as it were yeah. like, the whole collective thing kind of kind of you have to think about it that way too so yeah that's that's a good point i think however like grandmaster you cannot get grandmaster if you don't understand the game yeah 100 percent. so th they've th they've really struck a good balance in my opinion um i think grandmaster really pushed me it could have pushed me obviously a lot harder but i don't know i th i think maybe i underestimate myself i play this game a lot a lot more than the average person does and so i see it like grandmaster really pushed me but i still got it done but i imagine like a, a person that can only play three hours a day max that's like, me that, <laughs> it, it's very tough to uh start pushing yourself like one of the tasks that was incredibly hard for me was the sub don't drop below 50 hp in the inferno I feel like that's a one. That's one that a lot of people struggle with because it's not in your muscle memory. It's not. It doesn't seem like that should be something like natural. Like it's just not a natural thing to go for. Like just don't drop below fifty HP. Like why not? You know. So it was really tough for your mind to kind of switch gears and be like, okay, like I have to safe up right here because or else I'm gonna be chanced to drop yeah. below fifty. And so the other one that was crazy was, and it was actually very simple. I got it in my first try, but the fight cave don't lose a prayer point tell me about that one because i'm i'm thinking about that one it is literally okay so how i did it i just hid behind italy rock the entire time i would tebow the bats coming at me because if one bat even attacks you you fail it yeah um so you just sit there well i didn't tebow it i, I think i brought a bofa bofa you don't need any prayer so you can just bring a shit ton of brews bring sweets i mean you still bring restores just to you know after the brewing up but um I just started listening for sounds. the The major waves, the major would come. I would just, I would just, I know the four tick pattern. So as soon as I know when it first attacked, I'm just clicking on and off the prayer every four ticks. I'm not doing any one tick flicking action. It was too scary. <laughs> I didn't want to <laughs> fail it, you know. So I would just do the like little lazy flicks. Um, and you know what? If you tank a few majors, it's really no big deal. In fact, you tank a lot more than you'd actually think. I was taking a bunch of zeros. Um, it, it was getting to the point where like a wave would start. I had I would have no idea where the mages were spawning because I didn't actually even pull up the uh, chart, which yeah. w is a massive help, by the way. If you're actually looking to do this task efficiently, you should just see what cycle you're on so you can know every single wave preemptively. But I was just doing it blindly, and I would just listen for a major. I'd tank the first one. I'd take a 20. I'd take a 30, eat up a little bit, and then I would just get into that four-tick cycle. It was really simple. It was honestly very easy if you know how to one-tick flick. So like you you've done GM uh, like what did you learn by doing it? Uh, I learned how to okay. Let me think of the biggest things I learned. Well, here, well, one flex I did was uh, I completed six jads initially without dying. 
And then I completed six jabs again without dying. So right now, my my six Big, jabs. Two zero, two zero. <laughs> yeah, it's two two to zero, and I'm very. I do, now I don't want to ever do it again, which is shitty because I love six jabs, but I, I can't ruin the, the beautiful record. But is is the uh, is the anniversary surprise you going to f- six jabs right now on 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 recording to <laughs> absolutely, free it? Absolutely not. But you know, <laughs> you know what's crazy is the first one was on stream, so like I'm streaming this shit and I don't die. So and then that one of the tasks was do wave five and then do wave six back to back without dying and i was like dude i cannot fuck this up it was so (laughs) it was terrifying because like it's so funny like you were you were precious about like keeping that one (laughs) oh because when when grandmasters came out and i realized i had to do six jazz again i was like oh it's over like there there's no way i'm there's no way i'm gonna be able to hold myself like so still that I, i can not die but no i did it so uh, nice, I think nice. I think the biggest I think the biggest thing I learned was appreciating efficiency. So mm. CG, okay, so Gauntlet and the Corrupted Gauntlet had a bunch of tasks, and I loved them. I was addicted to them, and I thought I would hate them. I was dreading potentially doing them. There was the speed run ones. There was the ones that almost are requiring you to like unequip your weapon, kick Hunliff, and then continue the cycle. You know. That kind of stuff just intimidated me. I was like, I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to enjoy Gauntlet. And you know what? I really enjoyed being crazy efficient, going for crazy times, yep. going in with very, very, very little supplies and potentially having to redemption. Like that was fun. And I started appreciating that. So I think that's the biggest thing I took away was just appreciating learning, appreciating doing something out of my comfort zone. And I feel like, anything in life relates to that when you whenever you push yourself outside of your comfort zone it sucks you know the thought of it mainly and then maybe even doing it but af- the aftermath is beautiful it's like wow i learned something so yeah like after after inferno i felt that after nightmare mm-hmm. i felt that yeah it's just like a load of different little things in life where it's like okay it's actually possible it, the, the, the the tricky part about that is actually reminding yourself that you've done that so when like the next thing comes along, like next is going to be released next year, uh, I'm going to look at some of the streams and be like, oh, <laughs> but um, but similar to like how you were talking about in 2015, you're watching people trying to like one tick prayer flick. I feel like the the benchmark for that is like watching people how to like redemption tick eat stuff, yep. <laughs> or just like or like um, all, all these crazy like blood barraging on dead NPCs and things and all these different things. We were all these different tools in the toolbox we're familiar with now. How we can approach the game in a really different way. Yeah. It's like how um what's it? I remember the I remember the stream when Vorkaf was released and Wooks I, I saw Wooks invent the Wooks walk basically. So that was that was on stream. And then like um the, the, then there's like two other really funny things about it. So like later um obviously CG comes out and you've got the tornadoes and people start Wook walks Wooks because like you, you you learn the tool and you're like oh you can apply it here too like it's not it's not actually like just for calf related yep. and like most recently in, King, in Kingdom Divided with them when you're fighting the ghost like the amount of people like streamers or like progress like YouTube videos I've seen of people just Wooks walking that just like it's nothing yeah um even but back in the day it was like what the hell like yeah how do it was you amazing do and, I, I, and I remember for like my first like I don't know I did like 700 off off task kills at Vorkaf just to like try it out when it first released and like just trying to learn how to Wooks walk back in the day but now it's just like it's just what you do yeah it's like just like else. essential it's just one of the essentials you do it's like oh well yeah time to Wooks walk so like what so I think when when like next or T- more specifically when TOA comes out um I'm go- I'm really looking to see how Jagex could mitigate where the player base is at the moment i feel like tob hard mode kind of had that but that's that's an unfair comparison because had had that in the sense that it was solved quite quickly but that's unfair because it basically was just tob with different mechanics yeah. or like just like little different things when you've got like a new canvas to paint on i wonder how like what um jaggers are going to do to like really mitigate us just applying crazy shit to to to, to what they release um, I, just so, so just so it's not like a like a, a one day flop or something. Yeah, I asked Mod Arcane. He he was in my stream yesterday talking about. In fact, right after this, let's talk about the uh, wilderness changes that are happening. But oh yes, yes please. I was I was asking about um what what uh, mo- what Mod Arcane thinks about next so far, and of course you know he can't offer any spoilers or anything. But he said there is a lot of depth to it. 
and I think that was the perfect word to sum up a really good update potentially is depth. You know what Nightmare yeah. lacked? Depth. There was yeah. nothing to it. It's just do it. You, you, there's no way to like go crazy or yeah. do something crazy out of the box efficient. It's just no, you just got to like sit there and hit it a million times. I think if you think about all of the best content in the game, so I'm thinking Cox, for me, Cox, CG, and Fasani's, those are my top three. Um, they all have insane depth to them to where like um, you can apply you can apply certain knowledge to certain situations which only come out like one out of 50 times or something, but it really like helps you in that, in, in that moment or there's certain things that you pick up that you just integrate into your normal play. Um, like I, I haven't been back to Gauntlet since CAs are out, so I still need to do all those tasks, but I pretty much completed it um, before CAs came out. And that was, I think, Gauntlet, Gauntlet despite like, you know how like t- not, not having a Tebow was a personality trait for Iron Man. I feel like not having an Fbo is now that. But like so many, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're at Gauntlet, you've got your Mithril Skin guitar on because you died and that like, you couldn't out it, so you equipped it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like that that type of feeling. But for me, like I did it pre birth nerf, whatever it was, got the got the blade then, yeah. like when it was like when it was actually a blade, not a seed, um, way back in the day. So yeah, it's um, I think about that, and it's just the amount of depth that look it looks really simple you just collect the stuff you go in you do you, you listen to some australian in your in your ear talk about <laughs> counting down and stuff and then and then you then you kill the boss and you get the seed but really it is just like so much depth to it so much tick save so much like pre-planning and thinking all in just the prep like yeah. the like the prep the prep itself is like the actual best part of cg which is weird to say it's like it's like tob people say nyla is the best <laughs> part of tob it's like it's it's actually the most depth even though it looks like the most just brain dead or simple bit so yeah same with cox as well like um like yeah this time last year i didn't have any cox kc and now i'm 11 out of 12 and it's just like the amount of depth in there the amount of like things i've learned to apply to other areas um again that, that overcoming of that like thing that you think is um really difficult but actually you you can do you can do quite easily now um because like when I, as soon as I got the claws, I like stopped going, and then I went. I came back for bingo to do like some team raids, and it all just it was like riding a bike. Yeah, it's like yeah, I was just just doing doing it as it were, and, it, and it's all fine. So yeah, it's um it's really quite remarkable there. Yeah, but with, with CA, so my goal is um to do elites, uh, and then like push like push slowly towards masters and GM eventually. I know t- like TOB is going to be a big barrier for me to break next year uh, for those type of things, but I'm also kind of stuck on. Uh, trying to finish out Kona right now, so that's that's putting a spanner in the works. But as soon as I get a task for a, a, a boss I haven't done, I just go and do it. So, yeah. so slowly, slowly trying to get elite before next, but that probably won't happen at the pace that I'm at for. And a uh, big thing, Hydra. and a big thing for after elites, I gotta just say one thing I regret is not having completed masters before like doing Inferno tasks. I really feel like oh yeah, that, that's a given. Yeah, you should really get those two tasks down because honestly, I was getting to the point where I was trying to do some of those CA tasks uh, at Inferno off task, Ooh. and it was it was just painful. It was just not fun. I did, dude. I did the melee Inferno and no Tebow Inferno, both of them at the same time off task. It what? was quite just annoying. It the whole thing was just not fun. Was doing yeah. no a piss low DPS the whole time. I was using a like full justy because I was like I didn't have a Slayer helmet. Full justy with a mace and a DFS, just going through it. And then I brought an F bow for Zuck off task, and I was like this. I, I brought the crystal armor as well, but I don't even think I brought an anguish. It was like a fury with a with crystal armor and a bow. Mad. It was bad. No, no, so. no blood fury or anything. Damn. No, no, no. I did bring a blood fury. I did bring a blood fury. So uh, okay, I guess okay. it wasn't a fury. It was blood fury. Yeah. Blood Fury, by the way, made that just cakewalk. It was a cakewalk. I love that item so much. It's so I, busted. I, I, I've got, I've gotten over the fact I gain nothing but shards when I feed them to just to get them. They are. Uh... <laughs> you know, I bring up you a lot in my. Yeah, I, know, I know. <laughs> but it's it's so it's bad. it's a it's a, it's a really good example. Like I went I went too far, yeah. uh, and and I capped out. I, was, I didn't hide her enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I should have stopped to like one ninety. I would have been fine. But one of you, okay, I, I, I mean, I think this is you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Weren't you going for a top page in every skill or all the skills you could do? So you were kind of rushing those skills that were filling up. 
I can't remember uh, if that was you or not. I, I saw the opportunity for thieving and I took it. Yeah. Because like everything just aligned for me to like, I was in my last year of studies. Uh, I wasn't motivated to do anything else in the game. And there was, a, there was a spot open. Actually, uh, I, I have told this story again but for people who are new. Uh, I, I'm front page thieving now, but I didn't used to be. Uh, so <laughs> um, do, do the math and see how I got from rank 27 to 24, wherever I am now, and uh, you'll, you'll figure it out. Oh, God. Silly people. It's crazy that uh, top page in the main game is filling up in a few months. Yeah. Yeah, I heard you talk to uh, Minolinsky. That was a really good uh, cast last last week, and Thanks. how um, things are, things are full up and up. That motivation's just kind of gone now. Um, so, like, what what then drives people more towards that? And I guess, yeah, is is that community sense? It's why I'm part of part of a clan. It's why I might like, try and engage with different types of people, even though I've kind of taken that back a bit more um, as, as as of recently. Uh, I still try and keep in touch with things and. Um, even though I still kind of play this as a single player, like just being around other people, looking up to people, seeing what they're up to, um, kind of inspires me to do things like you with the mace, high grow at all times, yeah. even people in the past who I don't talk to anymore, they still impact the motivations to play the game. So, yeah. Okay. Preemptively, I need to say this. I have asked, this is for the audience, I have asked Dino to be on the cast upcoming. So uh, we will have a PKers stance on this. So don't feel like we're circle jerking. But Iron Vaddy, let's talk about Wilderness Changes. Mm -hmm. um, they have announced, and they already announced it months ago that they were going to do this, but now it's like, you know, they're they're repeating themselves. Uh, PK Skull Prevention is now going to be a toggle that will prevent people that don't want to skull from getting skull tricked or just skulling in general. So what do you think? I think that this is essential for any sort of PvP uh update going forward and, I, I, and, I, and that that was always going to be the case especially with anything wilderness related right like you because we're, we're beyond the point now where you can say oh we were just young and dumb or when we were naive or why are you taking it so seriously like this is another this is a topic i i i, I kind of prep something for when we talk about like the art stuff and um putting big giant green cannons into the game which don't fit but um <laughs> the the uh with, with, with this in, with this in general it's not like oh why are you taking it so seriously or you're just a cry baby or you know it's, it's, it's good to lose like it's actually just kind of not like it the, the 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 tricking aspect of it shouldn't be part of um like any serious like form of of pvp content and i, I do i do like differentiate between like anything like ser seriously pvp and anything's just kind of like a joke yeah. um because 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 to me like just attacking someone who you know isn't going to fight back, you know um, poses no chance. Yes, they're out there in risk, but like to what end? Uh, and it just doesn't just doesn't it doesn't sit right with me, especially especially nowadays where we're all kind of grown up now, and there's just, like there's no point really. Like I actively try and just not die to give you the satisfaction of killing me to get my fifty k of risk that I'm doing. Like I actually I actively take in way less stuff it's like yeah i've got less risk but my reward actually hasn't changed because if you look at like how things are itemized i'm not actually losing out that much like i'm still got like my main things which are doing the damage and you really just get my proselyte and that's it well done like so so t to what end really do you get from killing me when i like bank every kill or whatever yeah. and it, it makes a difference to me again these things are never oh, i just get it so yeah so any any serious form of like wilderness changes or pvp update in general um, needed to have this and I feel like this is a good thing mainly because it kills off the wilderness finally and I feel like that's an essential part of any form of PvP content or like foundation coming into the game finally so, so that's, that's interesting I see, I, I see, it, as, I see it as a good thing mainly because it destroys because the people who want it to be in there they'll be like oh the wilderness is dead it's like yes it's been dead forever thank, thank you for letting go of, of, this, of this whole piece of content now we can now start and think about something which is actually like what PvP should be, rather than just like I think I said this in, in the last cast as well. Like, um, it, it's PVM. You're, you're basically just doing PVM where the person's just not fighting back, so you're, you're literally just killing a net creel, basically. So I, I actually disagree that it'll kill off the wilderness. I think this is actually going to revive the wilderness activity, um, and I think it's pretty like 
uh, it, I, I, I just think that the counterplay that is going to be encouraged now is actually going to revive the wilderness. And I'm not saying that the wilderness is the essential part to to help PvP. I think uh, mini games and other things can really help with PvP, like yeah. tournaments and stuff like that are a great thing as well. But I think this is actually helping the wilderness rather than hurting it. And I think this uh, is okay. actually... So I, 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 hate, I hate this update then because it's helping the wilderness. <laughs> I think it's helping the wilderness, but I think it's helping everybody. I think it's literally helping PVMers. I think it's helping PKers, um, you know, PKers that actually enjoy PKing. And I, I tr really try not to generalize, uh, like the PKer base or the PVM base. Like everyone's different. Uh, um, so people will say, like, oh, all PKers just want to attack sitting ducks that are just defenseless. That's not the case. In fact, I've watched a lot of sh PK streamers where they will literally just ignore. The people that are just naked or just running away because it's just not exciting content. What's exciting is like you initiate an attack and the guy starts fighting back. You're like, oh shit, okay, we're doing this. Let's go. And then you're fighting and it's creating like real balance, non lopsidedness to the wilderness. It's bringing balance. And I think balance is like the biggest thing that will revive the wilderness is people fighting back, people. Almost just like, all right, yeah, come attack me, come attack me. I'm I'm just sitting here with my my shitty gear. All of a sudden, you pull out claws and venge. Like, it's gonna create counterplay. That is the biggest yeah. thing, and it'll revive the wilderness. In my opinion, of again, we don't know a hundred percent yet. It's got to come out in the game. We've, we've got to we've got to embrace it a little bit. But I actually think yeah. this is a good update for everyone. I'm not saying for me selfishly. I have completed the wilderness, guys. I have like I'm done in there. Um, well, I'm not fully done. I still need a dag and high hat. That's the last thing, but I've spent my time in there. It's not really that fun when you're getting just owned. It's really fun when you're getting a fair chance at defending yourself. That's fun. Yeah. Cause that actually turns it into a fight rather than you just trying to like run away. Like I, I always like the predator versus prey thing just kind of bothers me at the same time. That framework of like, so that's how you want to enjoy the game. Like, does it, that doesn't and make sense. This is why eyes. it's good is because people that enjoy that. Okay. I'm just going to take an example. Like there are, there are content creators that their entire channels are based off of like PKing and videos like that. Cause people love watching it. It's obviously getting them views. And so this does hurt them. It just, that's a fact. But at the same time, this like, there's, there's so much to this, but what I'm trying to say is like this is like a really good thing for the game, and it's literally going to help PKing. It's going to make that lopsided fight of the prey being the victim or something. You know, like there's the predator and prey, but the the predator is ha has every advantage in every single way to win this fight. He is perfectly geared for the situation. He's got all his shit ready. He knows that if the guy attacks back, like he is. He has less gear. He's killing a boss out there. Like this is just bringing more balance. That's all I'm really gonna say. Just I, I can't. Yeah. yeah I, I so can't so really here's he, 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 the thing that I'm, I'm observing there, right? So you're saying, uh, and this, uh, this isn't argument against you. It's just a general comment. But like you're saying, oh, it's gonna be great for the game. It's great for everyone. And like that's so you you're the type of person this updates for, right? And you're and so you you will be more engaged into going into the wilderness for doing this. So you if you had stuff to go do, you'd be more inclined to bring more risk in there, or, or oh like yes. more pro more appropriate risk because okay. you have because there's less there's less of a chance of you losing it, right? So that's that's your perspective, and that's the perspective I feel like. I mean, judging from the likes on your video that you put out uh, in terms of the ratio of it, in terms of people what what other people are saying on Reddit, like yeah, where people are welcoming this change, it seems like a good change all around. On the contrary to that, you see the actual people, the, the the PVPers who've been asking for more people to go into the wilderness, who've been asking for more people to engage in PVP, who've been asking for more love in terms of PVP stuff, complaining that this is coming in. I feel like that disparity kind of just shows right there why I I, I, I kind of go beyond what I said in the, in the last cast about um, like... You know, you should just like figure, figure, like do stuff for yourself, not rely on jackets too much, do your own torments. Like you kind of get what you deserve at that point, because like they 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 are doing stuff, and it's never just it's never enough. It's never like the the, the right things. It's never like the stuff that you that would really suit well for your ad revenue on your content or um or or, or or on your Twitch stream or to like get that extra like four hundred mil you didn't deserve because you tricked them into it because you logged in under them or something like like you 
at, at that point, like you're still complaining, even though other people are, are there are other people you want to get into the wilderness are saying, yeah, I'm going to go back into the wilderness because of this. You're saying, no, no, that's not good enough. It's like, that doesn't, that doesn't really sit right with me to the point where I kind of, uh, I, I kind of just lose interest in like the PVB community as a whole, especially when your your representatives are kind of saying no or uh, you're ruining it or you're just being crybabies. It's like, well, maybe I'm just not gonna like be be I'm I'm not gonna be for your case now because you're complaining about the thing other people are celebrating, um, and that these are the type of people you want celebrating to like be back into your game. Does that does that make sense? Like, yeah. I'm just like rambling. It, you know? So pvp has been dying for years everyone knows that it's I, I think there's been a lot of factors to it a lot of things jagex hasn't done well but a lot of the, just the community in general that divide with iron man modes uh and speaking of like me going out in the wilderness me doing a piece of content beforehand there's no way I'd even fight back, especially if I have a wildy weapon. If I have a wildy weapon inventory, I have my, all of my stuff turned off. I am not risking an item that took me hundreds of hours to get. I'm just not risking it. And so that is just where PvP is not fun in that situation where you are just turning off your attack options, getting dicked down by some guy that's just, you know has has no risk basically he's just he's just attacking you and so yes uh, this update does lower the if you consider that fun if you consider you know attacking defenseless people fun which some people probably really enjoy that then yes this will you will lose fun because now there's going to be activity there's going to be me coming out there with really zero risk losing these main three items yes i could still get smited but i'm going to have three items out there and i'm going to feel like okay come attack me Come initiate a fight with me. I, I'm, I'll be glad to do that because I would have people ragging me at Callisto when I was going for the pet. Not ragging. I don't really know what you consider it. It's weird. It's it's weird when you draw the line of griefing, because what do you consider griefing when like somebody keeps coming back to the exact, keeps hunting you down at Callisto? You know, you're hopping through some worlds. You're not going crazy trying to hop through every single world, so he just avoids you at all times. But you'll have one guy that for like three hours is just hitting you he's probably hit you 10 times you know so like at what point is that griefing that's besides the point but the point is i'm never going to attack against you i have a vigora's chain mace you have mystics on like you have yeah. mystics and the only thing you're risking is a toxic staff or something or an ags and you know i'm not going to attack you so this is now going to be like okay you attacked me once i'm going to get prepared for an anti-pk because uh this is just Th this is going to create fun and the other thing mod arcane was in my stream talking about i i asked him will the iron man changes happen with this change like hand in hand uh the iron man changes that if an iron man kills any player their items just sit there and nobody can touch them and then they despawn so currently right now if i were to even kill a main if i were to anti-pk the guy can just run back and reclaim his shit that's it. Like there's, there is zero risk. Like that is imbalance right there. Yeah. So he yeah, is exactly. actually, he said that both of those updates will come like around the same time, which is just, I don't know. We don't know a hundred percent, but I think this is going to be the single best update that's ever happened to PVP, like rejuvenation, like wilderness rejuvenation. So far. Yeah. I feel like, uh, yeah. Cause I'm, I'm not a PVP. -er. I'm, I'm not been interested in PVP. I probably won't be even given, given where, the community is and no reception to these type of things but like i guess to like in, in my naivety and just to stop my ignorance the one question i would ask the pvp community is what at what level of support is good enough for you to be satisfied with them at least doing the right thing or like you can build something from there because i like it, it could just be me like selection bias or like the behemoth clips i'm watching all the stuff on on twitch or whatever but um but there seems to be a lot of activity going on in like fights and stuff like people are holding like 200 300 views and just in revs like in in absolute max just like killing people um that seems to be pretty active like revs seem active so there's, there's a spot there that you can go to to kill people if you want to um you know i got ragged many times when i was going for callisto and, and betty and stuff like and in, in, in all in, like because i i finished out the wieldy cas basically and like in um in all of those times, I got PK loads. Like people tried and attempted to manage the telly or whatever. I only died a couple times, 
and like that that was fine i wasn't risking anything because that's that's the whole point there was no point in me bringing anything else out there because again no incentive for me to do that maybe yeah. zero maybe incentive. If I, yeah i mean i i wouldn't because i'm just not the type of person to but like no like if i if i wouldn't and you wouldn't then who would yeah and surely those are the type of people you want to bring in right like that's that's all you've been asking for is people to go into the wilderness with a bit more risk or give people a reason to go in well this is a reason to go in and you're still fucking complaining about it so you want to know why point, too is because yeah this is lowering the fun you know what's fun is if if i was a pker i'm thinking okay let's just i know I, yeah. i'm not i'm not trying to call anybody out i'm let's just imagine i'm framed shout out framed big fan i watch your videos you. I'm just gonna bring this up as an example. I'm framed. I make videos based on like anti or just anti PKing, skull tricking, PvP in general. You know what would be a fun update for me as a PKer? Now I'm framed. I want as many people out in the wilderness as possible with the same sort of mentality where people just run away defenseless and I get free loot. Yeah. That's fucking fun. You know what this update's doing? It's making that not happen. It's making people fight back against me. And I don't like that. That's not a PvP update, you know? But in reality, this is what brings balance and actual, like, counterplay and activity into the wilderness. Whether you like it or not, whether this goes against your personal fun, this is a healthy update. Yeah, like, of course. It just is. And so I understand why people are upset because it's completely going against their idea of fun. Where their idea of fun is making uh, the third party, like, making the person their attack having a... Uh, a shitty time like that that increases their fun um having somebody else not have as much fun like just them being the victim basically this is where it, yeah so i completely understand why pkers are against this because they have all the advantage currently and now it's lessening that advantage i think i think the best way to put it is that this is an anti-pk update but a pro pvp update yes yeah. In is, fact, then, I actually think it is a pro PK update, depending on on how you look at it. Because there are some PKers that like fighting PKers. There really yeah, are. Yeah. I'm not trying to generalize everybody and say they. No, but like a PK fighting a PK turns into PVP. That's that true. Makes sense. That, that, yeah, that's a good. Like point. so, I so the way I differentiate is like PKing is killing someone who that isn't consents. fighting you back. <laughs> yeah, and then and then and then PVP is you know fighting someone who, who oh, actually the, wants the, to fight you and yeah. is fighting back. Yeah, the yeah, PVP yeah, yeah. is consent. The the PKing is non consensual. Or people are like, oh, you're in the wilderness, so that's like, yeah, I guess. But at the same time, there's no, like, it's, it's, it's just quite one-dimensional. And yeah. for me, like, a, a nuisance rather than something I actually want to join into. But yeah, like, those those are my two things, really. Like, I, at what, at what, at what, what, it's not even like what update, because you would just say some, you know, random level 60, like, silver rainbow super chins in, in, in level 60 wilderness where you have to like pay five mil to get in and like yeah that's your perfect update but, but like what what's like the minimal level of standard that would be good enough for you to be like okay cool we can actually work with this uh in in, in a wilderness thing because like in if i had full control over the type of stuff that would go in for um the the, P, the pvp side of things i would probably i would just well I'm, I'm i'm me but i would scrap pking as a content completely and just keep it fully focused on pvp I, um, and, b and build a whole system around that essentially yeah no, i mean yeah that, that's a good idea because because that's what that's what you deserve you, you you complain about stuff coming in it's like well okay <laughs> it's like what, what, what else could really come in so yeah so that, i was that, talking that. so so uh i have a viewer of mine one of my mods who who is a pk or he actively pks all the time he's always camping in pking streams he literally says this is one of the best updates he says like currently oh, he says currently in the rev caves, for example, you have, well, first of all, there's another thing. He, what he really wants is singles to be singles, not you basically doing like a tag team with your friend attacking one person that's helpless. So that that's a, that's another story for a different time. But what he sees out in the rev caves, he's out there a lot is these people with max crystal armor, Bofa claws, everything, you know, ancestral potentially. And then when somebody starts attacking back, they actually start what in his words they start shaking, like they yeah. they, they they're not expecting that they're in their ancestral and crystal. And when somebody starts attacking back, they're like, "Oh fuck!" Like, okay, let, I'm dipping, you know, like I'm I'm not risking this. It's not worth it. That's what's going to start being inspired with this new update is people are going to attack back, and it's going to create just. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it a million times. Balance. It's just balance. This is what yeah. makes the game healthy. So I mean, when if I ever go to revs, which I might do, um, 
then yeah, I'll definitely be attacking people back. Yeah, because you know the risk. Like if you're well, if you're doing it on scold, you should be doing it scold. Oh yeah, scold, scold, scold. Yeah. Um, which is actually a good update because everyone being scold is just kind of fun. You you do feel free to attack back. What sucks about it is that generally when you get attacked, there's another person on his team that's the TB -er that's just waiting for like the perfect opportunity to TB and then they just like tag team you. That's a little annoying because it's supposed to be singles, but there is a way to avoid that with if 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 you know the game mechanics and everything. So part of me just doesn't understand like before we move off the PvP stuff. Yeah. Off, like when I when I was at Vettian, right? Yeah. Part of me just doesn't understand like the seven man hit squad <laughs> on my like 100k risk. It just doesn't, like it's, like yeah. The max I could be the max I could be carrying, and like none of you even smiting either. Like the max I could be carrying is like I don't know. I get. Maybe I get the Ring of the Gods drops. Like, okay, cool, but that wasn't. You, you shouldn't be counting on that happening, right? Really, like, no, that's it's, not, it's it's just you know. it's just PKing with the boys, you know, and that that is fine. Of that's still predator versus prey in a way, but you know what? If you're going out to multi, that is kind of what you're signing up for. Which you know, multi just in in general is just unfair. Like that's maybe. The point of it. Maybe I'm only complaining because I've got no friends, so I don't understand what it's like being with the boys. <laughs> yeah, anyway, let's I mean, move on. <laughs> I mean, it would also be really fun if you were a main and you could actually profit off of just going out with your buddies and attacking helpless people, you know? Mm. Like, that that is what people enjoy, and so I have to just embrace that. The thing I'm against is, like, just, like, yeah, that sucks because it's completely unfair. It's not even fun. It's just like, all right, okay, okay like, there's seven of you with Fire Surge. I'm dead, okay? Like, that sucks, but that's part of it. The skull tricking... And just the fact that you could potentially skull is the thing that like really bothers me. Somebody initiating a fight and then you get completely punished for some like unintended thing you weren't, you know, planning on. Yeah, I'm glad that's gone. Yeah. So it's Group Iron Man also came out this year. Yes. Group Iron Man, what do you think? I'm I'm on record saying it, it would be less popular than DM forty five. And uh I kind of got egg on my face with that one. <laughs> I like I are you, are, you, are you surprised at how actually I don't even know I, I don't even know how to assess its popularity right cuz yeah it's like there's, there's there's popularity in terms of views on YouTube and then there's then like then there's actually bumps in seats how many people are actually playing the mode and I yeah. and 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 to separate that there's people who wouldn't be playing otherwise playing that mode so there's a lot of people who've played before who are making groups who are like this is their new group but i wonder i want to know like how many new players new groups like new friendship groups or like oh we'll all hop on to create this group or whatever or is it not just like a rehash of everyone that was playing anyway like i, I want to like there may be more accounts in the game but in terms of like actual people online or how many new like actual players are in i wonder if that shifted or i'm not sure like what do you think it's hard to say. I think uh, none of us will really know the assessment until like maybe they give stats this year for like a Q and A, like talking about it. But mm. my pers my perspective of it, like what what I'm seeing, is a lot of just players, like normal players, can't really get into Group Iron Man that much. Like they can't really invest themselves because there will always be a dynamic of somebody going harder than the rest. Some guys not pulling the weight. A guy that's not feeling it, a guy that burns out, like it's just really, really hard to find that perfect balance of like enjoying the game. Where content creators can do that, um, there's a bunch of content creators that have created their own teams and they're thriving. You know, they're getting great yeah. views. It's fun. They know they're gonna play it because that's their job. It's not even like, you know, they oh something else came up in life. I'm I'm gonna stop playing, boys. Sorry. So. I've seen too many Reddit stories already of people. Oh, really? Quitting. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of them. There's already a lot of them. People like getting into fights with their friends in the groups and then a, a leader going AWOL and I guess kicking the rest of their team. I don't even know. There's a lot of stories of it though. I'm just like, uh, yeah. And that's just the shit you do see in that, that, that they post about. Like, my, my, yeah, my main thought about Group Iron Man still stands like, how many new people has it actually brought in or is it just a is it just people playing like alts as a team yeah because i'm not I, yeah it's, it's hard to know because i'm only i'm only surrounded by people who already played a game and even at that point they're not really not everyone's playing group iron man anyway like pretty much everyone's reverted back to their mains now 
the main islands or like just didn't even try it or touch it or it's just like a complete meme on the side that they're just doing because it's a new game mode like that's that's what i meant by like it being deader than dm45 because there's only like a whole group like real handful of people who are taking it seriously as their main mode um and even then there's only like individual groups like groups and things i'd, I'd love to be able to like be able to see and it's, it's hard because you can't really see it um because you don't really have that you don't really have that breakdown but yeah i'm i'm i feel i feel like i can't say I'm, i was right about it but at the same time i feel like i'm pretty i was pretty close like yeah. it's like it's... You, and you could you could see it from a mile away it just wasn't it, it was it was popular but with the player base that was already there um so in a sense it was just like a new league i guess um because it's and people are kind of treating it that way um that, that's that's my general feeling about it i think you nailed it with um like it's 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 almost like a league uh it's popular but i don't think anyone's really taking it that seriously where that is their new dedicated account especially mm. because a lot of people have made hardcore teams and they are literally yes, saying that was that was that was literally the thing that i didn't think about last year it was like the, the fact that like so with hardcore in the mix that actually does like a does add like an interesting element into it um in terms of like longevity replayability uh, gives you that incentive to like really try hard at it, but even then, I'm not really seeing it that much. And, only, and, in, only, only, only in content stuff. And what's sad is like I've, I've okay, so Fuse, Rice Cup, and Mutts have yep. a group together. I asked Fuse, he said no. When they when they lose all their lives, they they're just disbanding. Like it's over. Yeah, of course, it's over. And then they just go back to their other thing. So a yeah, lot of, of people, I kind of see that where it's like okay, as soon as that the hardcore group, as soon as all their lives are lost, they're done. It's over. Like, why? Why continue? Because that was the point. Like, yeah. And so it's like, it's like I see now, that. Like, but, you but wouldn't. I, you wouldn't. Go on. Yeah, no, no. I was just gonna say I don't even see them replaying a uh, group hardcore anymore. I don't even see them doing group anymore. It's like, it's like that's just over. Where hardcore yep. used to be, like, there's a bunch of remake andies. I really highly doubt there will be that many remake groups because it's not just your decision; it's the group's decision. And there's gonna be one person or two people that are like, "Nah, fuck this, I'm going, <laughs> I'm leaving, I'm, 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 I'm abandoning this team, I'm going solo again." Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to see, because last year going into this year, I was like, "Yeah, it's not gonna be as, as, as popular as people think it, or how it's perceived to be that way." Um, I think the poll was rigged. I'll just put it out there. But um, the, the, the it, going into like next year, it's just gonna be interesting to see like where, where it stands. And like, I do feel like it will, it will bear out that it's just not going to be the thing because like people, all, the groups will lose their lives. Uh, people will go back to their main accounts or start a new series, but like you can't just like okay, here's our second, here's, here's round two. It's like, <laughs> yeah, come on, guys, like yeah, it's, it's over, man. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> Here, let's 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 go to a Twitter topic real quick. Go um, yeah, sure. Annie Ellie, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Yo, shout out to, shout out to Annie Ellie. Um, I think I actually don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's a he's a very good friend of mine. He's I met him in Runefest 2018. Oh, and awesome! He he's he's a former rock member. Um, I met him, uh, yeah, on in the like the closing ceremony. So at the closing ceremony of Runefest, they have like a band playing in the main like where where the where the theater was, and um, there wasn't many people on the dance floor because everyone was in the Aviator, which is the hotel on the corner where all the where all the Jagex and the content people were. So that's where the actually the main party was. Um, but yeah, it was literally just like me, uh, a guy I won't mention because he's pretty persona on Grata in the community now, and like uh, Rot Silver, and then him. Uh, basically just in and, and, and I think the engineer was there as well and it was just like us five just in in, in this little dance hall, uh, dance area thing and uh, ever since then yeah we just kind of kept in touch it's, it's, awesome. it, was, it was quite cool um yeah he, he was sat next to me and he pointed out when Jed came into what well, Jed came into like the bar area this was like post all of the drama and stuff so, and like me and solo <laughs> mission me and solo mission were like oh fucking shit it's Jed like why is he doing it yeah, that that was a really that was a really fun night actually. Holy really, shit. yeah. If you, if you um if if they ever hold Runefest there again, um, yeah, try and try and sneak into the Aviator like I did. I, I like I knew I knew it was the place to be, um, but I didn't know there was like a main entrance. I didn't know it, so I actually snuck through the kitchen to get in. <laughs> like there was like a little side door, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna go in and see what's going on." And um. Yeah, I just I just like walked in, and then you get into the main hall area. Like you go through the restaurant, main hall area, and then like you go upstairs, and like literally, 
everyone's there like frames there alkins there guns chili's there wow. like 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 boaties there so let me like all the j mods that's so uh, dope content, like, dude literally just, like literally just everyone there and then like obviously it starts building up as like the the, the why still it's going but like everyone else who was like uh attending there kind of just went home or they went to their hotels they went to wherever the weather spoons up in the main town in Falmouth oh no in Farnborough but like the aviator right next to the venue was actually the, the proper place to be and that was a really fucking fun night I wish I wish I stayed longer but it kind of turned a bit hairy if you know all about that room fest particular story um I've but, heard of there we go but anyway, so yeah, yeah, and Eli, um, yeah, I met him there, and he's he's a good friend of mine, so we we, we talk on a regular basis. All right, he, he asks transition into PVM and future goals for PVM, and then the theory behind K-pop Korean av <laughs> is that like the avatars <laughs> or something? Yeah, or just yeah. in in the HLC. Yeah, yeah. yeah so so the, so the first one's kind of like. Um, the, 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 yeah, the transition from skiller base, I guess, Lilla Dolt to Allo, Higer slash Hybrid came just with like the changes of the game, the way things were going, kind of catching up with the times. I feel like, um, but in, in reality, this is a PVM game. There are like loads of different PVM updates. And it was silly of me to like block out a whole area of the game just because like I didn't feel like I, I I didn't feel like I needed to, or like it was a cope towards my bigger, more grandiose macro goals. Like I was too wedded to like the macro play style rather than just enjoying myself. Yeah. And like nowadays, I actually oh, I just got a genie, nice. Now nowadays, I actually just like enjoy um, like doing what I want to do and having fun in the game. And actually, the actual fun parts of the game is the PVM side of things. So completing cocks, doing nightmare, moving on to other things. Um, I'm currently like just at Hydra trying to get their jar. Um, it's the only thing I need left. And um, hopefully I'll get that soon. But then it's just like, I find that fun. And much more fun than going, like doing like UIM goal or something. Because um, that's what I, that's what I'd have to do. And it, 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 there's like a cap of 200 mil, right? But like the KC just doesn't end. Yeah. And you just keep going and you keep going, you keep going. It's like, that's the, that's like the endless level of repetitiveness I wanted. Whereas in skilling, you still have that. You still do the same effort for thousands and thousands of hours, but you know it ends at some point, and that's the goal. Rather than like something which is just kind of inevitable, um, you still get the inevitability at the at the end. But like, it just doesn't stop if you want it to. Like that, like you can keep going if if you want to. Like even if you complete the log, you can still just go back to Hydra if you enjoy Hydra. Yeah, there's no like no stopping to it. Like yeah, you get two hundred mil mining, you can still go. You still go back to granite, but like <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah, you there's know? like nothing. Where, yeah, whereas like the KC and the high scores and like it just goes up and up and up and up and up and that's like the actual enjoyment part for me. Another thing that I thought about today actually on, on that question was the game kind of just catered towards that play style anyway. So you're really fighting against the tides to like try and do anything different. And as more bosses come out, as the drop trade tables come out, um, and if you're worried about like devaluation uh, of your skills or these type of things, then um doing bosses for resources is like the best way to prevent yourself on that because you're doing something away from from the skill itself but you're going in line with where the drop tables are going uh and then what's the skilling method which fully devalues your method comes up but you have everything you need anyway so you didn't really waste any time because um yes there's an, an inevitability for things being enough again the side topic it doesn't have to be that way but um that is kind of the trend that is going down at the moment and you can kind of like uh like stop that affecting your play style if you just kind of take the different road of it, like just doing the PVM side of things and getting the resources that way. Um, Cause yeah, like you just don't, you just don't lose out, especially if like your goal, like mine is to complete the game. Um, you would have to have done it anyway. So it's just like reordering the way that you do it and you just do the skilling last because all of this is just zero time in the grand scheme of things. So yeah, um, that, that, that's where my mindset is. And I don't see anything changing that, even though I said last time, I this I don't see myself PVMing. I feel like I've come to a pretty solid foundation of like this is the direction the game is going. It helps me not worry about things being devalued. Um, it can only get better and better from here as long as they release new drop uh, drop tables and things contribute to that. Um, I can do different methods and things. I don't have to worry about GP or resource gathering or these other. I can have a lot more access to zero time stuff because it all will just come out anyway. Um, yeah, and and and, and it's endless. I don't have to like, like worry about capping uh, or like uh, capping too soon and then like having to feed blood shards with no XP coming in. It's just yeah. like, it's just a nicer <laughs> feeling to be really so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The second question, 
um, about K-pop Avatar. So there's a, there's a bit of psychology behind this, I think. Um, and like, so the first primary reason could be that K-pop is just really like good as a music genre and really popular, and people want to like gravitate towards that. But but more specifically, it is around like the K-pop girl groups. So there are like boy bands and stuff um, in, in in K-pop um, that are like still infinitely popular, but you don't see people rocking those avatars. Um, so, so I, I think, I think what it ultimately speaks to is if, if you're playing this game, you're, you're, you're a young guy in, in, in a, like a Western country, you're, you're, you're kind of already like an outcast already. You, you, you probably were that guy who's playing, who's, who is playing this video game. You may be like, you may be like 24 to 27 or something. Um, and you, you know, you're playing this game a lot. You're, you're of internet culture. Um, you, you, you're, you're on Twitter and discords a lot. Um. And, and the trendy thing would be to, you know, have your hot Asian waifu uh, <laughs> beg on your your beg on all your needs that you need that that, that, that you desire for as as you, as you as you do your gaming. And who better than a Korean? Because um, because because uh, they, they they look uh, they look attractive. So <laughs> there's there's that there's that obsession there. But then there's the, there's the kind of like looking to a culture that isn't your own as well, and that kind of like othering aspect which. Um, kind of piles on as you're withdrawing yourself away from the culture that you're surrounded by. So like you're you're already you're already kind of like a nerd and like an outsider in the culture that you're in. Why not go full throttle and just be a complete weeaboo? Like I feel like I feel like back in the day, um I felt I felt this for sure. Like it was a good like four or five years of like and I'm sure this still happens now where like you are just like a giant weeb and that like you you look to other cultures because the culture that you're currently in just seems lacking to you. And there's something a bit more aspirational in the in the content and media and and the the way they they uh, they show their stories and it kind of just resonates resonates with you more than what, like some Netflix TV show you can just pick up and, and watch here. So, you know things just seem so much better across the other side. So there's like a celebration of that too. And part of that as a young guy goes into the women that you celebrate and idolize and K-pop just seems to be the 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 way that goes at the moment. I mean, it used to be like anime girls and. Um, all, all kinds of other stuff, like emo girls back in the day, like the Paramore days. Yeah, I remember like I remember like in my like people had like uh, like what's her name, like Haley from Paramore or something. Like like it used to be that type of stuff, but same type of same type of desire, same type of demographic to be like aspiring to something which is a bit outside of um, of your your current culture because that culture has rejected you. So to celebrate it would be uh, against who you who you currently are. Um, that's that's the that's the academic answer to it. Um, but yeah, mainly because that they're, they're hot and it's kind of a meme. That was a that was way more in depth than I was uh than I was imagining. Wow. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's, yeah, you that's, do that's, see that's, it a lot. That's, that's 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 my answer to the K pop question. Okay. So uh yeah, I don't I don't know what my thoughts are. I mean I shit, that was that was a lot to take in. I see it a lot. Uh it's usually high level players for sure. Yep. I personally, um again, personal I do not watch anime. I don't listen to K-pop. I don't see the total like, I, I like I don't see the reason for it because I'm not into it. But who knows? I mean, oh, so like, I think any so I'm 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 mixed race, right? So any any black or mixed race kid like boy who was like 11 to 14 or so had like Goku as his dad. Like that's just like Garrett. That's like Garrett from Dragon Ball Z. Like just like guaranteed. Anyone in the comments say now. Like definitely Goku was your dad. Because like <laughs> see that was the other thing. Is like I barely even watched Dragon Ball Z. Like I I had friends that were like super into it. I had also had tons of friends that were into Avatar of the Last Airbender. It's just I just that never. That was like after my time. I like never gravitated toward that stuff. I was more into like family guy simpsons and Malcolm no no, no, no. yeah like i was it was like it was like pokemon Yu Gi Oh, dragon ball z there's like the trifecta basically yeah i, I was into Yu Gi Oh for a little bit but like i don't oh, know yeah. i just kind of fell out of it yeah there's the uh, but then there's people who don't fall out of it and yeah. then you like you you get into like the mangas and then you get into like the the other cultures you start learning about these type of things and then you end up putting a k-pop heavy on your um <laughs> on your avatar <laughs> Okay. So there we go. That's I feel yeah. That I feel like that's closest to my what, what, what's actually going on there because I used to be of that um, before I just did other stuff. Interesting. Okay, we got a question from Box Terrier asking favorite RS drama of the year, and then oh, I know you asked me this at the beginning. What are you, what were your personal 
your biggest personal and RS achievements this year. So I guess IRL and RS. Um, I, know, I know mine in RS was the maze. Just for those. What, what what drama happened this year? You tell me. I, I don't know. Let's think. Uh, well, Group Iron Man was a little bit dramatic. People were trying to spite vote no. Um, I don't uh, know. That wasn't. There, that wasn't really there's good. current drama right now with Wilderness Changes. Uh, it was drama see, with hard modes coming out with everything. I let me if... let me go, let me look let me look on Grand Holy Grail of drama and see the top posts and see what comes. <laughs> yeah, you might need you to look know at what that. I'm talking about. If you go to Reddit and look at the monthly calendars that are. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. See I can't the, even uh, remember like the super dramatic. Oh, one one seven, HD. That's a that, big one. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. That's it. One. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, that that has to be the biggest drama of the year for sure. Even though it was. Even does it? Does anyone use the plugin anymore? Because like, I use you, it for you, screenshots. <laughs> I'll take a screenshot. Well, of it. well there you go. <laughs> no, no, but but it does. Okay, so I would use it if my computer was amazing to the point where I okay. had uncapped frames, like just you know. Because right now, if I switch to one one seven, I have to turn everything down to the point where it doesn't even look good, and then yeah, like same. I can save frames. But when I go to my POH, I go to Prif, dude. It's like. 20 frames max it's pretty bad yeah so if you go top top of all time on reddit three months ago was it it's 78.1k upvotes Jesus from that, that was on the top page and then the next one is a joke video from swamp, swamp Letics, which is a 45 point says so a 30k upvote gap Jeez. That, it was first... insane how big it blew up yeah and how many yep. awards does it have Can uh you see them? uh it's got over four thousand. fuck yeah and then so the third top post is about hd mode releasing and then the fourth one is also about uh, hd so yeah number one three and four are all about um hd shout oh out to God. the rendy drama apparently that the, the when when him and Mauler got banned. oh yeah there was there was rendy drama this year that as happened well. this year yeah that was um, big was, too. Like that, that, that was that was big. If one one seven didn't happen, I feel like that yeah. was um uh, that was a big one. Um what happened before yeah. that? Do you see the month calendar? No, I don't see the month calendar. I'm just going through like the top yeah, posts at the I moment. See. Um this is like a really good year retrospective question. I can just go to like top of this year and be able yeah, to Yeah, that that would actually probably show it. Yeah, let me, let me keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Um Yeah, no no other drama, just like really High, oh, Group Iron Man passing the poll. Yeah, yeah that so that's good. probably third, third best. Yeah, one one seven, hundred percent for sure. Yeah, like, one... not 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 even a, like not even a, not even a question. Like I, I feel like the hype was. I mean, obviously the hype was overblown. Um, I don't see people using it that much anymore. I turned it on for a bit, but realized my laptop was too shit, so I don't use it. And I, I think like the native GPU plugin that comes with Relight is really good anyway. Yeah, like it's it smooths out everything to the point where I wouldn't want it to be any more than that essentially i really um, love gpu i i can't yeah. get away from it yeah yeah exactly so yeah um, I, I still see people using hd and i imagine a lot more people use hd that aren't like content creators or just normal players because people do care about graphics i don't personally but a lot of people I do, do love it, I, I, I care more about like the functionality of it and the, the, the aesthetic yeah. Um, and so, like, if it was like really high graphics, and actually, let me just turn it on now because apparently there's like a snow update. Yeah, the snow looks awesome. By the way, I just can't play with it more than like a few minutes because. Yeah, I've got it on, but like sometimes I'm like, I did the set. The way I have it doesn't look like other people have it, so I'm like, mm. what settings are you using? I want it to just be like some like yeah. Part of me is just hard hard to get through, but like I just turn it off and it looks nice. So, yeah. um, there's there's no point to do that. But, yeah, I feel like that was the biggest drama. What was the other question? I was just going to ask, like, about basically all of his drama. So the question literally was, like, what was your favorite RS drama of the year? Or was there any that you got into personally that you had a, that you picked sides for? Oh, there was, um, there was a little Twitter one with me, which I won't mention. Um, I ended up, <laughs> I ended up just deleting my Twitter because I said, fuck this. I'm not dealing with you losers. Um, so yeah, that, that was me. And that's, yeah, they, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Regarding uh, like the big drama thing, did you ever uh, the, did you ever have any ones. sides? Uh, like with Rendy, did you like pick sides or choose sides? Or with Group no, Iron Man, did you care? Oh, uh, Group Iron Man, I cared. Uh, again, I, I still think I feel like there's there's something fishy about that one. Um, and then, yeah, the, the the other two, I just found it interesting how 
like this this was the thing that people got railed up about like there's a there's always that type of um cause that people get causey you know the causey type of people who are like i will pitchfork this to the bitter end there's like there's 6k comments on this like Fish. like you know and it's just like a lot um oh and oh, people, oh sorry yeah. sorry one more thing sorry to interrupt theoatrix was the other one the theoatrix uh, drama oh yeah that was hilarious <laughs> Okay. Anyway, continue. I feel, I feel like the, the the side was pretty clear on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Was. Yeah. It was things. These things are just kind of interesting to watch. I, I tend to watch these things from behind, from from from, from a distance because yeah. you don't want to get too cozy about these things and be all up in arms. Um. It's always good to keep a level head. Uh, that's always good to remember, guys. It's um these, these things will pass, and you may end up looking silly by saying the wrong thing. Yeah. I had Rendy on the cast shortly after all that stuff happened. Dude, I got to give a shout out to Rendy. He's just, a, he's a good guy and he's funny yeah. as fuck. His, his videos are good. He's, a, when I had him on the cast, man, you know what? He was not bitter at all. And in fact, the whole entire cast was just talking more about him as a person rather than like stupid RS drama. But, yeah, um, shout out to Rendy. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like Rendy's a good guy and uh, people that maybe see him as, you know, something else or something. I, I, I feel like watching that podcast that I had on with him will, sh uh, sh will show a different side of Rendy that you might maybe not. I'm, not, not I'm going to be out here with my free Rendy shirts. <laughs> you know, free, 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 free my brother free Rendy. Rendy. Yeah, I mean, he's totally fried from the game because the way he likes the game is literally like, breaking you know, it breaking it and so you, yeah just unfortunate circumstances but i still love the guy yeah awesome. yeah yeah shout out to randy uh was there was there yeah question? there was another question irl personal irl personal biggest uh achievements this year and then the runescape personal biggest achievements uh irl i lost my job in february and got another one in five weeks later that was good uh moved back to my hometown my family that was good um yeah doing really really well in my work daughter's growing up pretty nicely can't ask for anything much more than that or else stuff like this year was like shit for me but it, IRL wise but actually turned around like it's like hockey stick at the end it's been quite nice so um awesome. can't really complain as we get as good to christmas so like it could <laughs> could have been way better um but it it could have also been a lot worse which is surprising to say and then um so i'm getting a bit nasally because it's getting cold in here and uh must have eaten something a bit weird but um hopefully it comes out fine uh rs stuff yeah just like getting like completely cox and completely nightmare like has to be um like cox took cox was from december to may and then nightmare was from august to october um which is crazy i didn't i did nightmare in two months basically yeah that's insane <laughs> yeah that's uh, so beautiful to just be like basically that like eldritch is i'm still missing eldritch and an egg that's it i like i'd like to go back but i also know i need to do like a hundred nightmare for to get on the high scores i'd like to round it off nicely with a nice number uh shouts tails um but yeah it's just yeah, it's just that that one thing. Like when I'm thinking about like completing, completing the log, um, there's certain things where like I'm missing jar of stone, I'm missing jar of chemicals, like these type of things. And uh, I, like part of me is like, do I just go for the rarest one first, or do I like try and fill out the log first? It's yeah. always, always a conundrum. Um, but yeah, those those are the two biggest ones for me. Um, like at, apart from the mace, because uh, that, that's obviously good. But what's like the, what's the number two for you? Uh, what. Wait, sorry. What was my number two goal? Yeah, or like achievement? Yeah. Achievement, yeah. Uh, uh, probably Zuck helmet. Uh, yeah, true, Zuck true, helmet. true, true, true. This is yeah, two big ones. We have, we've had a good year. Yeah, yeah it, it doesn't feel like the beginning of the year. I mean, I I achieved <laughs> in game. I I basically achieved nothing the first seven months, but <laughs> or six months, I guess I should say. It was the friend you made along the way. Yeah. No, I mean. But here's the thing is like even IRL, I mean, because my, my entire life doesn't focus around my RuneScape achievements. But on top of that, like my stream was growing, the the Sebe cast was continuing. And so there was a lot more to it than just Grind Nightmare. And there was more that was just 
helping me push along and stuff. And those IRL projects were, I mean, do you consider those IRL projects streaming RuneScape and then talking about RuneScape? It's all RuneScape at yeah. the end of the day, but yeah. Yo, uh, type type in the comments. What was your biggest achievement this year, guys? Yes. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And uh, so, what are your goals for next year? Goals. Like, these, these are these, these are like kind of like sound like wrap up questions. We're definitely not wrapping up. I'm just like yeah. No. Uh, honestly, I don't really know. I mean, I want to complete next and raids three, but it's just too hard to even say like how long those will take. And if I'll enjoy them. So one of the things I want to do is I really want to try out leagues because I've never done a leagues, never logged into one. Mm -hmm. But I will only do leagues this next year if Nex isn't amazing. Like if, if Nex is absolutely like amazing and stuff, I'm just going to skip leagues and just enjoy Nex. But if it's anything like how Nightmare was on release, oh yeah, like I, I will enjoy that break and take and do leagues and try to embrace it. Yeah. So I don't really have any like crazy like for sure goals but can we talk about the cannon let's talk about it the magic cannon. What, what, are you, what, what are your thoughts on the cannon? my thoughts are i don't care i actually don't care in fact um i i'm one oh, of well. those people that actually enjoys cosmetics i don't actually like go all out on them i'm not like a fashion guy i was just always trying to rock fashion but i never find anything wrong with uh just aesthetic changes in stuff like yeah maybe i'll have some issues if it goes a little bit too far but i honestly think i'm almost playing the devil's advocate with the canon because too many people have already voiced extremely strong opinions that they hate it to the point where now i have to like balance it out by like being on the opposite end even though i i personally think it's not like amazing but because everyone else is already saying it's shit then i'm like eh, it's not that bad i kind of like it yeah it's weird how that I, uh... happens but I, I have I have two like separate uh like problems with the canon. The first one is like um like the actual art itself. I feel like to, I feel like to be a good artist you need to like work within the canon and the actual aesthetic of 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 what you're working with in the first place. So that you get like certain period pieces, you get like certain sets or like um or certain works which like are cohesive in a theme. And I feel like within this theme of old school, there's a certain level of lack of better shittiness and old school type of style that comes that that like that, that has its own canon, has its own history, uh, has its own quirkiness to it, where you can bend the rules and push the, push the boundaries of it um, to 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 get something which still fits in. It's still there, it's still thematically there. Um, I feel quite strongly that the canon in and of itself falls outside of, of bounds of what could be considered to be an old school piece of art and that's that's my that's my opinion on it that's my that's my case of reason why the bigger issue i have with it is the people who support it thinking that there's that there's no reason why anyone would have an issue with this in the first place and like i've I, like i've actually taken time to like there are I've seven like really just like annoying like it's just like it's, it's it's the way it's positioned, the way that like it, the argument that kind of happens. That like yeah, um, that's fair. Yeah, so like the the first one is like it's kind of like uh they, they start asking questions like they just they were just born like oh, what is what is a fantasy game like what is old school art like they ask questions that like have answers to them but like they presume that they're kind of like they don't know anything yeah. so like they try and ask they try and ask you questions to set the standard to where they can then like go attack it on that when clearly everyone knows what we're talking about when we talk about like an old school feel or the aesthetic or whatever because there's like a whole 20 year history of 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 what of the art style and what it looks like to compare it to so when they when they when they start off with like oh what, what do you even mean by fantasy or what do you even mean by old school art it's kind of like pretty disingenuous yeah. and then there's like attacking attacking it from it like why are you taking this seriously oh it's not even serious it's even not even a, a serious point of contention like there's no even there's no point of even talking about it why like you're the problem for like bringing it up you're like why are you taking it so seriously why do you care so much about this um there's like belittling the argument oh it's just a it's just a canon bro like it's no big deal it's just one piece of content it's just a bit of aesthetic um they're like it's like changing the actual argument of itself i'm saying it's not fitting in it's not a good piece of artwork for it they were just saying oh you have a problem with the cannibals or you don't like me as an artist or i do things i do think okay well well here here's one thing um you have been sounding a little robotic just in the last few minutes so i don't oh. know if there was some connection issue oh, or whatnot but it's still still totally 
understandable yeah so just, just con yeah sure. so context context i'm in a hotel room uh and i'm i'm tethering off my phone uh so it's a bit it's a robotic isn't it yeah it's a little bit robotic but uh It'll it'll do if if nothing else can change. I was just wondering if like something happened to the connection, but if nothing else happens, it's still okay. It's not the end. Yeah, of the it's world. it's kind of kind of flagging. Um, maybe I can change region again. Okay. Um, if you can still sorry, hear guys. me, guys. I can still hear you. Okay. Sorry, guys. No, it's it's totally good. Um, I wanna. So one of the issues is like people. This is what sucks. Is like yes, the cannon is is out of place it's same with like the elf art you know elves faces all turned and then like but people were having issues with everything like they changed the shading of herbs on herb patches and people were complaining <laughs> i thought that was a great update but the fact that people will complain about any change makes me just not take seriously a big thing like a cannon like a cannon this thing will look really wonky in the game like i'm not gonna lie it, this is a pretty large thing that you're setting up anywhere and it's it's pretty aggressive looking like just this weird thing looking but because everyone freaks out about every single graphical change makes me just not take it seriously so that's unfortunate yeah, that's and i do i do completely agree that the canon is out of place but at the same time i'm like it's it's fine like do you see the holiday event items they come out with you're holding a fucking like th 3,000 pound boulder like you're just walking around this boulder. like what is the point of that like that looks out of place like there's a lot of things that they just take liberties into just making just a bunch of cosmetics and I'm fine with it it's just like whatever you know the game's evolving yeah. you know I just kind of gotta not be such a boomer about it and but yes I I do totally understand your points of the canon just being a little bit little bit out yeah. of place this, 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 is, this is like where I double down though because I I still I still have a problem with it, and I I don't I I used to I used to think that oh these things are just inevitable, like catch up boomer, like okay boomer come up with the times, <laughs> but like these things aren't actually inevitable. Like you can you can just, prevent them. You can actually just make a decision not to. Just, I'm roboting again. Yeah, you are. Um, you can't. Oh, damn it! <laughs> Bloody hell! Sorry guys, this is uh this is like boomer tech audio. Um, <laughs> As I talk about being a boomer, uh, I get a bit boomer tech stuff. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Sorry, guys. So, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, the the um, what was I going to say? Like, these things aren't inevitable. Though. You can't just decide to do something differently, yeah. or like to not put it in, or to like not pull the update, or like to 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 not go against the canon kind of, kind of the art of, of our history of what the game is, and then act as if I'm the problem. I'm the person with the problem for bringing it up or having an issue with it um i'm mainly talking about the, the artist itself like i feel like um feedback wasn't welcome there and that that's that's mainly the issue i have with it because at what point what what, what can you do from that point you're, you're being made you're being made fun of for having an issue with it uh i i and, will just say and, and, yeah like on on their end it's them overcompensating for the overcompensation that happens with everything else so they have to take a step further and almost like personally attack your views on it simply because everything is attacked any change that any j mods make to the game it's attacked so like they are probably overcompensating just as much as like the other players are overcompensating again i'm just playing devil's advocate here i no, I, hear it. I don't really care either way um but i completely understand i think the biggest thing is just like empathy it just empathize yeah. with somebody's viewpoint and i try to see uh, i try to for most issues i try to see both sides yeah. i mean it looks fucking cool but it doesn't look cool for the game because uh, I don't think it fits in with the. It looks like Fortnite. Yes, the, the, the aesthetic of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what people are calling it. So, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I and I, I understand. Like, it's it's a it's a cool piece of art. It'd be nice for it to be put in the game. Um, I just I just feel like, um, it, what what it comes down to really is like, what is the null hypothesis? Like, what is the what is the standard you should be like having to build a campaign around to get it changed? Is it uh, these things are progressing and we need to they're like. Uh, you're you're the problem for like putting the cannon in, or is it the problem is the cannon being put in itself? Like who's actually like building the case for it to be put in? And um, it's, it's it it probably is a good thing to have that sense of uh, no, you probably shouldn't put this in because of X Y Z. Um, as soon as that's gone, I feel like then that leads to loads of other different. Um, I mean, it already has. It does like the way 
updates get brought in, what what the players want, um, ways to get things, the way things get voted in, etc. That type of mentality of oh, it's just inevitable. Uh, the game's progressing, catch up, boomer. Um, that leads down to ways which kind of just ruin the game for the people who really want to keep it um, in 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 a way which is cohesive to what it actually what it actually is and has been for a long time. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I I always think that's worth fighting for at least in, in some aspects, and art is definitely one of those for me. So that's that's all I wanted to say really. I just feel like there's there's a lot of disingenuousness disingenuousness around how that discussion went about, which really sat wrong with me, rather than the actual canon itself, yeah, um, which doesn't bode well for any future things that come through because that attitude just doesn't sit right with me as as a as a player. So that's fair. Yeah. Um. Sons asks, in a recent ramble, you talked about not skilling outside of bingos and PVMing instead. I think that's an amazing approach to post-max skilling and can lead to less burnout. Do you mm -hmm. still hold this view or has it changed? Nope, still hold the view. Um, just wish I actually skilled during bingo. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's addicting. You start, you start like, oh shit, like, I'm, I missed this one, now I can't skill again. Yeah, no, I, I still think it's true. Um, I think skilling in and of itself, um, when, when you do have opportunities to add in that competition i feel like that you should take advantage of it especially on an ironman where the there you're kind of encouraged to not spend all your stuff like you 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 kind of need we we kind of need bingos to get people to actually level up their skills because otherwise they'll just do things which they just bank up over time and yep. as soon as because you're, you're it's basically update um defense essentially like if you if you've spent it all already then you can't get it back it's 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 already in the XP and you can't um, do anything different with it. So if there's an update that comes out which um, makes it actually worthwhile, or you kept it, then you kind of lost out. So that's what that's there for. Um, which is again why PVM as a as a core philosophy for getting all your items, I feel like is is, is the best move because um, you, you kind of protect yourself against that. But yeah, I, I I only ever really try and skill during bingos, like do things like construction or make potions or um, do anything else that the team needs because um, it's just more fun that way. And I get to do stuff I um, can't necessarily always do during bingo. I mean, Olympus bingos are changing a bit more because there's a bit more of a PVM focus now. But um, back when they didn't used to be and it was all skilling, yeah, there'd be no reason to skill outside of bingo. And I still hold that to, to true. And then um, in terms of it uh, stopping against burnout, yeah, because you're just doing things that you kind of kind of want to do. Like if you want to scale outside of bingo, that's, that, that's fine. But I feel like for me personally, um, just kind of, doing things which are a bit endless and I know I can stop and pick up at any time. It's not going to like depreciate or go away. That method's going to stay the same, only ever increase by like a couple bits. Like take Hydra, for example. It's never going to get much more beyond 28 kills an hour that I'm currently at at the moment. Like, it's never going to be that. And, I, and that's even if I'm like completely slapping it and um, never banking my bones, right? So um, there's, there's, got, there's not going to be a piece of equipment which really ups that much more. Um, like with Vorka, for instance, may go up like another kill an hour or something. Um, but the gear that you get doesn't really change much, so that's going to be that's going to say similar. It's always always going back to it. Whereas a different, a whole new skilling method could, could just come out, yep. it could all just change, uh, and um, completely de devalue everything that you've put in, and you have to learn something new. So um, you know, I'll just save that for the bingos, and that that seems to help with my burnout. I do have one thing. Uh, what do you think about mahogany homes? Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, in I've completed it. So I've done done enough of it to, to get all the log and stuff. Um, it's not for me again because I can just do tables with the the way I'm building my account and basically have infinite GP for racks and stuff. So uh, through the PBM side of things, so um, that, that that's fine. But as a, as an update, I think it's really healthy, especially during bingo, like because uh, we scale it appropriately. So one hour of mahogany homes we equivalent to one hour of teak uh, of mythcapes. So you're you're basically getting one to one, but you're saving the GP of it anyway. So it's it's a really nice method and oh nice um, yeah yeah. So it, it's really fun to do during bingo as well, um, and I think it's just a pretty cool method. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think it's I think they nailed it. It's like I did yeah yeah I've I've been doing a little bit. I completed the outfit, just missing uh, the blueprints and the saw, but um, I did a a fair share because like initially, I mean, I I recorded my first hour after getting the plank sack, and I was getting like really high rates 274k and i felt like i was like already mastering the method very early on because there isn't really that much there isn't really many areas to like save ticks there are a few in like the actual houses themselves where you're yeah. building stuff 
but um so and i kind of wish there was a little bit more like depth to it there there is yeah quite a there there's a little bit like how you open the door whether you step in front of it first and then open it you could sometimes save a tick there and but uh yeah I, i've really enjoyed the method and uh i think they absolutely nailed that update I just so to... one, one one thing coming down the pipeline in terms of iron Man meta stuff i feel like next year and you're already kind of seeing it in a couple of other scaling methods is adding a bit more depth to things by bringing glass and blowing glass while you do stuff um mahogany homes is already one of those activities where you there is a method where you get over ehp uh macro wise by um by blowing glass and things uh Sepulchre is going to become one of those things too herbivore with the new um plugin that just came out which makes it as afk as quest helper um did you hear about that uh well, wait herbivore is going to be so there's a there's a new there's a new plugin on rune light um, which is like, I think it's like called Herbivore AFK. And do you know how uh, Quest Helper looks at like the VAR or something or the variable uh, value to see like how to see like you don't need to finish the dialogue to next progress or whatever. It kind of knows where you are. Okay. With with this plugin, it does the 50-50s for you. <laughs> really? So, and it like it has like a line that you just like follow and, and walk to. Like it makes it, so you know, like the Herbivore program already has like a path or whatever, but you kind of have to guess like yeah. which... Yeah, this one just completely gets rid of that. You can just like do that. So really, with that now, yeah, with that now, it's like no guessing. So you save, <laughs> you save, you save ticks on that already. Wait, is it and on the plugin hub or do? You, it's on the already... plugin hub. It's on Runelight. It's not. This is not a dodgy thing. I wanna, I wanna try it out. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, so that, so that's a thing. And we just updated the uh, skilling Discord for uh, Gliss has done. Shout out to Gliss, uh, high level Iron Man front page. I think um, he's done, he's done like an hour of blowing glass and doing cover ball like that way. Um, so that so that then that ends up being like plus plus EHP, but kind of not because you're missing out on like bird nests and stuff. It's just really complicated. But yeah, stuff like that adds depth to where you're just like adding in things. It kind of just adds depth to adds depth to it. So, um, Morgan your homes, yeah, thumbs up for me. I feel like they really nailed it. Yeah, it's it's just cool. I I think just the numbers and everything work out really well because there still is. It's not like that's the new meta. I mean, I mean, there's there's always going to be the meta. Technically, there's nothing that can be exactly tied. But it's cool that you have a choice. Like you could yeah. still do mahogany tables if you wanted crazy XP per hour. And if you're planning on like not completing 200 mil all as fast as possible, you're going to get a shit ton of planks all the time from from Kingdom. So yeah. okay, um, forty two asks general thoughts on how the save cast has progressed over the year particular particularly from how you feel about it as a guest um yeah so I, I think i touched a bit of it at the start where um i i thought it was just like a duo ramble type thing and, and this it, like it wouldn't last as long as it has if that makes sense like not not to diminish like what you could do or like the potential or anything but the the format i think it could have gone couldn't have gone as far as like rambles typically go it like it like had to form into something which is a bit more of like an interview series where you get like high ticket people on or um like actually like your your friends or all these type of things where um it, it, it evolves into something bigger so i'm really i'm really happy for you that you have this 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 legacy building content engine now um it, it, it it's it's good to like ground yourself in something like that i think and um yeah being being asked to come on again uh, despite you know the super long one at the start like one that didn't have any structure on it uh still not doing like a proper official episode as it were um uh in terms of like proper formatting or, or these or, or, or that it's uh it, it's fun i'm really excited to see uh, actually i'll ask you this like what what do you see happening to the saber cast in the next year or so i don't know i mean by next year i want to be on episode 100 wait if i can pull out 50 uh 50 a year wow that's my plan because you're gonna have a you could have a Christmas episode. You gotta like uh, put the snow on and. <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, this pace. This is my. This is like the end of the year and Christmas episode already. It's kind of how I see it. Of course, there will be an episode like right right around Christmas. I'm actually asking Puggin to come on, um, around Christmas. I think it might be a little bit before, yeah. but no. I mean, I I consider this the year anniversary. I'm almost considering every guest after this already 2022. So yeah, I think so. Like it's new season. Um, yeah that's what it feels like but uh no I, I just i look forward to just talking to people people keep asking like oh or will you ever talk to like non osrs people i i do not plan on that anytime soon i i want this to 
stay runescape focused i don't want to just become some mainstream podcast house, nor do i think i should or no you shouldn't w- would I, be I, good I feel, at it yeah i i think i think you need you've you've got a, you've got a really good thing going here um of like the the number one runescape podcast in in, in, in runescape like yeah, yeah I, I, I think i keep it that way that's what i want so yeah uh well here let me ask you a question kind of expanding on that do you, what would you like is there anything that you kind of wish was included in the sebe cast or things you wish i didn't do as much i know there was talk on like well it, it goes both ways some people like don't really care about people's history and the introduction of people they just want to hear the topics they just want to hear the juicy topics and stuff but some people do like the history because usually guests will only have one episode and so they want to know everything about them on top of the topics that are given so is there anything that you would like like to see or not like to see um i mean i don't know what i don't know but i like what i like what's already here like as a fan um i really just enjoy you giving a platform to different people around the community i think it's just cool and you're you you, you seem to be a natural at just like asking questions keeping keeping things going um like diving, diving a bit deeper into things it's um it, you, you you've grown uh, you've definitely grown as like an interviewer as it were um obviously like the, obviously obviously like the guest helps yeah. like if you've got like someone who's a bit dry um uh and you can't really go on for that long then and can't really hold their own or, or ramble uh, to the level that that you can then um it's a bit different but um yeah you, you've got something really good going here and I, I wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't let it slip through your fingers as it were so thank you yeah i i don't so i good. have i have not personally seen or noticed improvements in my hosting abilities but you saying that makes me feel a little bit better because you can't see it when you're the one like living it i see myself as the exact same as i was a year ago so yeah yeah def- go go back to listen to like one number two number three I, i'm not yeah, going to just... i can't man i can't re- i can't really listen to you, this stuff you'll, you'll see a difference <laughs> well, thank you dude Actually, I will say I did re-listen to a Hex's podcast that I was guest what that I was a guest on. I think it was episode like seventy five or something. I didn't know you were a guest on. Uh, yeah, what yeah. for one episode, Randy asked me to be on it. This is before Randy was on my cast. This is like uh, this is like early twenty twenty. So I was on it, and this is before I'd ever done any Sebe cast. But this is like right as I was kind of doing rambling. And oh my god, I had to shut it off. It was so painful listening to myself <laughs> because I was like the new guy, you know. It's uh, so I kind of understand how it feels to be a guest on a podcast. It's a little nerve wracking. Like it's just it's uh, it's it's hard to like be yourself initially. Like you can kind of get comfortable, you know, after an hour or two in it. But like initially, oh, I was I was nervous. I had been listening to Hex's podcast for years, and so that was it was an honor to be on it you know hexus isn't the same clan hexus used to be but it was still just a, a pleasure to be asked to be on it and, but i could just tell listening to it for like the first 10 minutes i was like i'm so nervous <laughs> this is weird this is not the this is not the voice of the sebe cast as you would as you would hear yeah it's like you you, you find there's a difference between like hosting and being a guest yes because like this is your house like I'm I'm in your house. Yep. But like you, if you go around visiting someone else's, that's like different house rules and yeah, shoes off. Yeah. Yep. 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 Different. Okay. His second question was: There's a persistent idea that the HLC and Irons define the outcomes of polls. If this were true, what changes <laughs> to past poll outcomes do you think we'd see? That's just not true. Um, I I I I'll t- I'll t- I'll tell you who does define polls it's the people who actually make the polls themselves which brings me to where the fuck is poll 76 i don't know i've got 146 elite caskets <laughs> i got 165 it's it's been a year where the fuck yeah. is poll 76 dude i was expecting it i was expecting to come in july and then i was like oh just two weeks it was august all right you know it'll, it'll come in september it'll come in october it'll come in november that is, that 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 is a topic i've seen though is like the content drought like is like I haven't noticed because I've just been doing my own thing. But has there been like a content drought? Yeah, like... I mean, if if you, if the content drought, the definition of that is people thinking there's a content drought. Then yes, absolutely, there's been a content uh, drought. Yeah. So like, there hasn't been this poll seventy six. Like I think when when it was when the elite thing was talked about, it was like poll seventy three, seventy four, something. 
It's been a year. No, it was. Like, we were already on poll seventy five. Well, oh, what? okay. So, so, so let me let me kind of give uh, a little bit of time reference. I had, I made the ramble, the the ramble with BC Guppy talking about elite clues, how they're fucked. I'm mm-hmm. so glad, by the way, that BC Guppy understood that because he went out of his way to look at the rates without yes. me, without me even asking. He just looked at, it and then he started DMing me. He's like, "What the fuck." And so I was like, thank God somebody else understands this problem. So then we got to talk about it. Got to share the video around. And this was back in April. And I asked Maud Elena on to, well, I, I just asked a bunch of J mods on Twitter. I was like, hey, can we get, can something be done about this? This is absurd. And Maud Elena confirmed this is back. It was either April or May, early May. It might have been May. I don't want to start saying wrong dates, but I think it was May when. She was like, "Yes, this will be, this is this will be on the next poll blog, like the next the next poll blog." So we were already on seventy five because she said the next one. So it's literally been like since April or May until now. There has not been a like a dedicated like poll blog besides like Group Iron Man um, and stuff like that. So yeah, crazy. Is that is that good enough? I don't know. What do you think? I mean, personally, I'm I'm with you. I do my own thing. I I'm playing the game. I even if even if I've said this before, even if there was no update for three years, from now until three years, yes, that would be a horrible thing, absolutely horrible. But I would still be playing because I've yeah, that many I'm good. Goals. Yeah, yeah, same. So yeah, personally, really... I I'm fine. <laughs> I have plenty on my plate already. But I know other people like crave those updates, and that's totally fair. And that should be the case. There should be updates more often. Yeah. But I think I think 2022 is going to be just crowded with updates. In fact, we're already seeing it. There's going to be uh, leagues. There's going to be next and into leagues two weeks later. Then there's probably going to be all those quality of life updates in February. Hopefully, poll 76. Yeah. Hopefully, poll 76 is in January, <laughs> but yeah, it'll probably be February. We'll see. Yeah, Let, yeah. Anyway, back to the question. So, like, I think it's absolutely laughable to think that high level people have any influence on. Uh, the outcomes of polls, uh, maybe in terms of what actually gets polled, but even then, I feel like, I feel like some stuff. Like, did anyone ask for this, or is this just like something you guys decided to, to whack on just just to see what would happen? Um, can't think of any examples, but there's been loads of questions where it's just like, what? Who? Would have? And then you look on Reddit, and it's like, there's no threads about this, no comments, uh, no tweets. Is it like a forum thing I'm missing? Like a, a different avenue? Like, um, so like part part of me saying that. Um, and it's not even the people on Reddit who actually decide these things, because when you put something on poll, it's kind of inevitable it'll just pass, um, because that, that's that's the meme. People just fall into the meme. So the people who actually controls things putting into game are the people who make the polls. So if you can get if you get their if you get their names, add them on LinkedIn, <laughs> make friends, uh, get get in their ear and give them the same page and the handbook, then um, that that would, that would be a way to get in. But yeah, I don't think I don't think. Uh, I don't think us us high level people really have that amount of influence that people think we do, or that we could have. Um, but if we did, uh, I don't feel like I feel like I feel like a lot of things wouldn't be in the game. There'd be just different things, just different um, different things catering to us. But maybe that's not best for the game because we are a small part of the community, um, and there is a larger part of it who wants the. This is it's just a mass man of things. They just want. Um, I guess, in, in my opinion, the cheap and nasty, uh, rather than the things that actually they, they don't they don't want but actually need. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Which to... is unfortunate. Which is unfortunate, but um, it's just the way it is with polling and so systems and that type of thing. I asked Minolinsky this, and I want to ask you: um, Would you like a new skill? <clears throat> in the... uh, yes. Yes. If, if... Uh, and it, it can be any skill. I just want something new. I think. I think. I think. Um, sim- similar to what power creep. Similar to the, like the, the time delay that power creep had, um, where that that something had to be better than what was currently there because there's no use in ten year pe- ten year old content still being best. Um, it's just like even even in me as a conservationist for uh, the, the soul of the game. I feel like into, if if you were if you were to release something, it's got to be at least better and not just a side grade to stuff. Because again, you run out of space for side grades. Otherwise, you're making content specifically for side grades to avoid power creep. 
and then you end up just like diluting the pool instead of creating like a cohesive progression chain which you can actually do now because most people are playing iron man anyway and that's how the game works um so like you go fight this piece of gear and you graduate into this piece of gear and this gear allows you to do this gear etc etc so mm. um if you didn't have that then what would there be to attain there'd be like no development path or skill tree that you can go up because there isn't really one where like it's not like a talent tree or like a a, a, a path of hero like uh, or, or something like that like a, a, a like a character development thing apart from gear and if you if you just keep doing side grades and uh, yeah you're going for all these different things but it's only marginal so it's not really worth it so you feel you feel like it's not like something you have to go get whereas two max hits is something i feel like i have to go get yeah um so 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 yeah that that, that, that that's correct and i feel like i feel like the time's there for it so what was the question again uh sorry <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I just asked. I was, looking at this, I was looking at this next question I was just about to ask you. Never mind. Someone, someone um, comment below what the question was. Yeah. I'll be happy well, to here, here's URC too. This is what he's asking. In fact, we'll probably think of what what we were what we were just talking about. This is where it all started for me. To this day, that cast is still one of my favorites. He's talking about your episode two, the cast. Nice, Vaddy. You deserve credit for getting me hooked on these casts. If you could add something. From another game to OSRS, what would it be? I personally like how most games have a training mode. Um, yeah, I think Sandbox is cool. Uh, I think from, from one thing I would add is like a proper PvP system. Like a, a full tournament system or an arena system uh, with seasons and rating. And um, just, just carbon copy the arena system from World of Warcraft. I think it would do really well here. I gotta um, so say, have... uh, just Go on. sorry for interrupting, the... Uh the the perfect the perfect opportunity for a clean slate at pvp is sailing having uh mm. ship wars <laughs> got your got your two ships out out beyond 50 wilderness out in the yes, out, yes. out in the sea and you're having these you're setting up your cannons you know onto your boat and you're fucking having pvp like that is who knows you know if jagex could pull that shit off but a clean slate at pvp perfectly balanced which sounds oh, we're talking like... about new skill if you want a new skill that's the question yeah that was it exactly there we yeah go. so so like yeah i i mean I've, I've heard you and bc guppy talk about sailing i think that's a really good idea um i'm just ready i'm ready for the right school to come up because again i feel like in a couple of years the, the time will be then mm -hmm. um yeah where the front, the front page is kind of filled up a bit um uh, power creep is kind of set in um there's a few other pieces of content and it's like you just put it in you put it in league five league six and just that have that be the beta like the league is adding the new skill plus like an extra little fun thing to it mm -hmm. um so yeah like the, the, we've got the framework to be able to trial these things out i feel like it would be a good, good opportunity to put something in i'm i'm definitely welcome to to one being added in as long as it again as long as it's cohesive to um what's already been there and it fits in well then i've got no problem with it absolutely the crazy thing is is like you're absolutely 100 percent right a beta through a league with the new skill is the perfect way to introduce a skill yeah because like, you people actually get to try it yeah it's, you get a like, you get a fuck around with it. you get you get a feel for it yeah yeah and you get to see like what's working what's not until it's like game breaking in the actual game so and then like the rewards can be aesthetic like cosmetic changes to the things that you make in that in that skill um, like you can do a whole leagues on sailing as a skill, because um, I'm sure a lot, I'm sure that much dev time goes into leagues anyway. Like if you kind of built a bit more of a framework around it, and have the have this have the league be the mini game sailing, which would then just be the skill sailing once it's back in the main game. So you start off on you start off on the main game, and you just train sailing and and and, and other stuff as well, obviously. But um, the main point is to just have sailing as a thing that so you can have all the league points be centered around the skill um all of it feeds into like training it and getting it to max level doing all the different activities at the end you can really flesh out and incentivize people to go try it out um and, and get cosmetic rewards like say like dragon is like a dragon ship like a viking dragon ship or something that you only get through like playing that league so it's yeah. like a one-off cosmetic thing. Like there's so many, there's so much shit you can do with that. Yeah. Um, I feel like that'd be really, that'd be really fucking cool. I, I think I know I've mentioned so many times whenever I talk about sailing with guests, but like the the trading aspect with it, where it's like the new Varlamor place or Valamore, whatever it's going to be called, mm -hmm. um, in, in in the corner of Zaya. Like let's just say this new city can only be unlocked through 
fa gaining favor through sailing, like as in you have to trade goods from other places around the world and then yeah. they will eventually accept you and that opens up the city to you. Things like that are just so exciting. Really cool. This is so much you can do with that and it adds like a whole, dare I say, RuneScape free level to it where it's like you just, again, it's depth. You just want depth. Yep. All, all, that's all I want. Um, like in this 100 BPM game, which runs on ticks, all I want is depth and there's so much here. Just add more. Yep. Okay. Um, Corrid asks, no topic, but a shout out to Save and Vaddy. The first cast, I guess it's not a question. The first cast got me to quit my main, start an iron, and work towards consistent. Yo, welcome. There we go. That's it. It's all, it's, all about, it's all about the long-term goals. Um, and they are very long on Iron Man. You can have them on main, but uh, they're, they're few and far between. Yeah, I think... So, yeah, um, I mean, clearly mains uh, and Iron Man have kind of like come closer together due to collection log and just Iron's almost, their their whole gameplay is almost streamlined for like what you're supposed to do. It's no longer like, oh shit, like we're an Iron Man. What do we do? Got to do these weird yeah. methods to train skills. It's pretty streamlined. Um, But yeah, I think the biggest thing just to enjoy this game is to have goals and Iron Man gives you that like freely. It's not like... Shout out to the mains that can go long term. That's very impressive. Uh, very impressive to like really push yourself because there's no real goals ahead of you. It's just you you choose the goals you make. So I've had a I've had a topic in my head for ages. Like I've got like a whole list of like bloody botting. Sorry, I've got like a whole list of um like topics. Like what 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 do you think is left for mains now? Like because this I I wrote I wrote that, that I wrote that question down like off the back of GI being released and. I think I mentioned this a bit in my shitty boomer tech ramble with the noise gate that um like as more and more people are playing Iron Man now, like what's left for mains to play to play with? And like does this shift the game design direction for Jagex because most of their player base might be Iron now? Because I think it's like forty percent now of people are just like playing some form of Iron Man mode, which is a big massive chunk and it's like a huge different amount of it's like two games you're trying to design for, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I think I think mains will always have a place. Um, collection log is just massive; it'll never be completed. Uh, just simply. Because, oh, it will. It will. I mean, you say that, but like third age alone takes like efficiently like fifty years, like at least like getting yeah, okay, every single third age. But but on top of that, it's not it's not only just complete what's in the log right now, but there is nonstop going to be more and more and more and more and more shit added. So. That's the fun part. Though. Yeah, and that's exactly what I mean. Is like there, there really is no end because new skill will come out, a new boss will come out, a new thing will come out. It's like there's just endlessly more things that are going to be added. In fact, this is going to lead me into another question. What do you think about completionist capes or collection log capes or, as I say, collection log sashes? Oh, uh, I've got no strong opinion about it to be honest. Um, because I'm not, I'm not the strongest collection log person. I only, I only kind of go for rare stuff at the moment. Like I could easily fill out like an extra four hundred slots just by going for the easy stuff, yeah. um, like re recompleting barrows, for instance, or or whatever. Um, I don't think yeah, we I mean, ever. It, sorry, just to interrupt again. Uh, I don't think I ever actually asked you what what was your barrows dry streak. You said you went on a. Oh no no we 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 did we did talk about this, but um. I didn't actually know the number though. Uh, twenty two two thousand seven hundred twenty seven. Jesus, that's a lot. Of and this arrows. was back. This was back in twenty sixteen. No, twenty twenty fifteen. 20, yeah, it was early. It was early. And your last so item, was, uh, Ara uh, Darius legs. Damn. So I was twenty two out of twenty four, and then two thousand seven hundred twenty. I got uh, Aram's robe skirt, and then two hundred two thousand seven hundred twenty six. I got. Dark legs. <laughs> was that yeah. for mole? Like, did you or did you just want yeah, to? Yeah, you had to. Yeah, you had to that, for mole. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I remember. Well, you did. Well, you didn't have to because uh, if you're if you're I'm on a PC, shout out to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wasted so much time going for it, whereas I, I should have just spent my time killing mole. But um, yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things where, you, like, at the time, I just wanted to complete it. It was my first like proper grind. It was like 220 hours of like 13 k d an hour. Insane. Just, yeah, just, just going for it in my little trident. This was pre Zora as well, I think. So it's just like a normal trident. Stupid, but there we go. <laughs> Good times. All these little, all these little grinds, yeah. But oh. yeah, I have to go. I have to go back with my harm and my strange lockpicks and just blast out and. 
get yeah. get locked back. Yeah, what uh here's another thing. What do you think about the harm orb now that the Hekka and the new ward is coming out in raids three? Yeah, it's it, it's sad, but we'll we'll see how we'll see how it plays out. I mean, um like yeah, it's yeah, it's not okay for these things for such a uh I guess like a cool item to fall out away, but it could just be one of those niche things. Like it could just be like another niche ball, you know? Like like a vol it could be like relegated to a volatile or, or an elder status and yeah, it'd be sad, but at the same time, mm, yeah, these things happen. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not too wedded on it because I got mine. I got mine undeserved in air quotes and early, and I only ever. I've only ever used it at nightmare and kraken, and then I've run out of wrath runes and I've not gone back. So um, it's it's re it's really nice at, at nightmare. I much yeah, I, love it. I much I love prefer it. using a harm over thralls. Like that's funny. I like. As when I ran out of rafts, but I was still in bingo and I was still like vibing with for the signs. I, I swapped back to Trident and Frozen. I really enjoyed it. Really? Like, uh, yeah, I, again, I just didn't burn at all. Like, either way, because, um, what was it? No, this was, yeah, I got my mace using, using, uh, staff. I don't, I don't have a sanguine here, so neither do you, but, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just like, uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it still. It was great. I loved it. Okay. Joey Cook. Ask what is the best and the worst update for Iron Man? Um, oh, we all know what the worst is. It's um, really Chaos Alter, isn't it? The Chaos Alter like, is the worst update. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that, like that's just without a doubt the worst one. Um, so fucking bad. And you know, the the really sad part is it, it was like just completely unnecessary, especially with how prayer is trained. Like with how many other methods are. To, the train prayer like in sold heads you got ashes you got those new spells that do bones and prayer but the bones are yeah. new, or the bones and ashes but the um that spell for bones is completely useless because it's like you have the chaos altar which is fucking busted i mean it's, it's not useless because melee necks are now a thing like what what is h what is it what is hard hardcore slayer is now a main slayer <laughs> fine oh yeah like you, you kind of just do the hardcore stuff because you just melee your necks and you do all the dragon tasks, and yeah, that's all your prayer done. Yeah, um, which is kind of sad. Um, yeah, the, the chaos altar was a PKing update, not a PVP update. Again, if you if you understand the diff my difference between the two, it was to encourage people to go in for PKs to then kill, but not to fight back with. Um, so yeah, bad update, bad for Iron Man, bad for the game. Um, still too powerful, uh, still too easy to bring no risk with because you just teleport there, and it's still really good rates. Um, best update for Irons. Oh, I'm trying to think back, but like, like, I'm trying to think of something which is like old, like an old update back in the day. Uh, that's iron specific. I'd have to, I have to go back into my rambles and really think about it. But I remember one of my rambles, I was typing in 99 to Fletch and like you didn't have the action buttons. That was a really good update. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Is that an Iron Man update though? Or I mean, no, I guess it's, it's no, hard no, no. to say what an Iron Man update is nowadays anyway. Uh, I, I would classify an Iron Man update as something directly affecting the meta itself, even though it's like a main game thing. Maybe... You know what uh, I'll say? Go on. Is, I mean, I... Oh, I got it, I got it, but go ahead. Okay, I, I was just going to say, yeah, the, the, there, there could have been some tweaking with this, but I really enjoy the sandstone method. That is good. Of That's sandstone good and seaweed. Like, yes, there could be tweaks with the numbers, but the fact that you're skilling to get, like, you're using other methods to to uh, make another skill, like, uh, I don't know what the, the word is I'm trying to think of, like, accentuating, like, this skill to help with this skill. It's just, like, it's just cool. So I think they just nailed it with that. And I've, I've always liked things like that. In fact, what I really want to see, and I've been trying to push for this for a while, is getting rid of the tick delay with rocks and making it so you can just mine gold get you obviously you wouldn't get as high rates um as like granite and stuff but like something to the point where it would balance out like where you're getting the mining xp and banking gold ore and then you use that gold to go to the blast furnace it's so sad that there isn't a way to kind of like i don't know kind of feed in mining into smithing it's just mining is its own thing efficiently and then smithing's its own thing and so yeah, I've always been a fan of like kind of collaborating skills and having them be useful. So yeah, it's a bit clumsy. As like a side note, I don't know how they're gonna solve the the, the shopscape issue. Just like, delete I mean, them. I'm sorry, that's how I think. I mean, that's, that that's... that might that might be that might be the only way. That really might be because 
yeah, like blood runes in and of themselves. Plus, like, here's like another like sneaky thing, like selling like stuff to the shop and then having your alt buy it and then you sell it again and it's just really fast, like just getting rid like clearing stuff. Like so like the runite bolts from Sepulchre, right? You just sell those to the shop for like 50 each. You get like your main to buy it back and then you just keep selling, 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 selling. Uh, instead of like having to hop so that's like a really quick way of like getting rid of all your stuff that's the best way to get gp from it so that's how you do it um same with like selling anything really it's like people think shopscape in, is in terms of like buying runes but there's also like the actual selling of stuff as well which is also a big part of um like what what is affecting iron man at the highest levels at the moment it's like how you manage to the gp there and what you sell what you use your stuff for um yeah, it's, it's it's a whole big thing, really. And uh, again, the, I think you like either have to like pause it or just completely eat the whole thing. Um, and yeah, that that would definitely have a big effect on the game. Best update for Iron Man is definitely Day Out. By the way, I just thought about that. Day Out's um, amazing. You're right. Day Out, Day Out, Day Out is absolutely amazing. I think Dark, I think Dark Mire as a as a whole was actually a really great piece of uh, like again side grade content into the game. But well, Sepulchre is not a side grade, obviously. But it added it added things which just well, two out of three. Well, actually, just one day out. Just kind of like gently uh, eased its way into the in, into the meta for everyone. So it gave mains a zero time way to do RC, and it gave Iron Man back their proper way of doing, be able to do many things with the gravity instance, and they actually use it. Obviously, blood shards are their own discussion. Um, I have a love hate relationship with them, and then Sepulchre obviously is its own yeah. uh, unbalanced monstrosity. But uh, that that in general, I feel like added a lot, a lot of good dimension to the game. Um, yeah, day out for sure. Best side, best time update, in my opinion. Recently, at least, I'd have to think about um, anything before that for sure. Yeah, I, uh, you know, the the one like big downside to, to Dark Mire was the uh, that hideous outfit that makes your arms like completely deformed. <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong with like? The, do you the, guys the just like? Sh- do you guys just shove out outfits like this looks right? Like, bruh, your forearm is like okay. Your forearm is like two inches, and then your bicep is like three feet long. Like what? Like who? Who approved this? Art? No, but you, like, you, you don't you don't understand. It's a fantasy game, so <laughs> you can you can just put whatever you want in there, and because it's a fantasy it's, game, it's, it works. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. Now that's <laughs> now that's now that's uh hitting a little bit closer to home. There we go. <laughs> um. No, I think I think Dark Mare was really cool. I, you know what I kind of miss, and I kind of wish they would do a little bit of this is add easter eggs into yeah. new places because like the whole like dark mayor is a really cool city but it's really really dull and lacks depth when you mm-hmm. actually kind of like just go around there's like it's like okay the there's word a... of the year is depth sorry the, the word of the year is depth we it, said depth it is lot. yep that that is that is the word word of the day word of the year um it, it really just lacks depth uh which is you know, I, it's arguable to see like how much depth you would want in a new place. Like Prif had some really cool things. Um, like they had like that random bunny that you can like fight. I've never done that. Yeah, still me too. to this day. But just like little things like that. And then there's a lot of like training methods. Like there's like fishing spots outside and other things. Like, um, I think what would be cool is if you could interact with the world a little bit more in like ways or just have. Something they did that was really cool. Well, had potential to be cool. It wasn't actually that cool because it's beyond just bad. It's just like it's just not good. But um, the Isle of Souls chest. They had this little update where they updated the Isle of Souls and added this little chest and this dungeon that you could loot. Um, it would have been cool as if there was like some really like rare thing you could get from there. Just things like that. Like it's completely like there's no actual benefit to skilling or pvm with this update but it's just easter eggs like that i, I love things like that yeah so I, I wish they would add more depth to these cities dark mayor was just a little underwhelming like you go to the shops it's like the same basic shit you get from anywhere the else. rope that the long rope was the only thing that was it's pretty cool but yeah um what else is there well that that's it oh, i i can't even remember what topic we were on what, what was the topic uh i don't know it's it's well that that was that was the final topic (laughs) that was the final real topic from uh twitter so like now we can just kind of talk whatever like we're thinking of so do you have any topics do you have anything that you'd like to 
so, kind of talk it's, on. so this is so it's, it's the anniversary uh episode and I, I i didn't want this to be about me as it were it's more about like the podcast and i thought i'd um flip it a bit and give you a couple of questions that were on my mind feel free uh, I'm for, for the fans for the fans yes do you do you see yourself more as a youtuber or, or a streamer than why i see myself more as a streamer and that's okay. just because i put in way more hours into streaming than i have youtube interesting so is there is there like a particular do you do you enjoy one more than the other uh, and why i think in a like in i in an ideal world i would actually like youtube more because there's something really beautiful about just putting something out and just letting it just do its thing rather yeah. than like streaming is you are putting in the hours right there right then nothing happens before nothing happens after it's just like you're there in the moment youtube it's you're you're putting out like history you're just like boom there it is like enjoy it i don't have to look at it anymore it's out there and there's there's something really cool about youtube also like the growth of youtube is very um linear or i guess not linear but just it's progressive it's like it's always kind of progressing whereas twitch yeah there's a lot of analytics that keep progressing like just higher but there's a lot that is kind of just unknown and unstable like sub counts uh and just you know how like like the content you're doing there's no real like progression to it. it's just like you're just doing your thing in the moment and so um there's benefits to both there's pros and cons to each but uh i think streaming will always be a part of something i do because i love it i just love having fun i love just being there with with my fans and <laughs> just people i love to be around and just talking shit doing whatever and the youtube is more like projects which i kind of like and just being able to speak my mind without interruption just like boom i get to say my piece and people listen to it like as a uh i don't know i feel like you have to be a little bit of a um i don't know if narcissist is the right word but just you, you kind of gotta be like an attention whore in a way to to like streaming in youtube i know that sounds a little like mm. bad but uh i think everybody likes attention to some degree but a lot of people it, just, it is what it is yeah <laughs> but i'm just saying like it's really nice for me being fully transparent it's really nice for me to put up something and people listen to it in fact sometimes multiple thousands of people listen to what mm -hmm. i have to say and i really enjoy that i really enjoy that i have a voice that's that's beyond just me talking to one person so yeah youtube does a great You've, job um, of that yeah. yeah you started putting out more uh, guys on youtube um, tell us more about that yeah so i started making guys well i've been i've been making skilling videos where they're just an hour of silence or an hour of trance and just me doing the method which i really love by the way because it's no effort i'm just enjoying the it's game for an hour just jamming out um the issue with that is one i don't profit off of those at all and that's not to say i do youtube for money i love runescape i don't do this for money i just i love it um but so i had to figure out a way to uh kind of I don't know. Like one thing with those guys is they are very, very niche, and a lot of people just don't enjoy watching something for an hour, and watching the reads yeah. and stuff. It some people love it, but the majority of people probably don't. And it's like a reference video. Yeah, 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 for sure. And so I decided, like, okay, let me try to take this a step further, put some actual effort and time into these, and make guides. So I've made like a blast furnace or a blast mine guide. I've made like corp guides. I've made. Some other things. I'm planning on making a mahogany home guides and a uh, clue guide, which is going to be my biggest project ever. That's going to take so long. I want to cover every single every hard, step. elite, and master step. Ooh. In fact, all tiers, but I, I, they're going to be in separate videos and stuff. And I want to like talk about like true efficiency. Like you got this step. I'm going to show you exactly how to like do this like the most efficient way that I know of. So. It's gonna yeah. be shout out to you for um teaching me about water fiends in the uh, Prif cave. Oh, that was not me. Or wait, who was that? Somebody told me that. Have I? I, I, no, I do not you, take you, credit you for told that. Me that. You told me that. I must have told you because somebody else told me. I'm not taking credit oh, for that because okay. somebody. That's okay. That's another reason why I love streaming is I learn things from streaming, and yeah. in fact, I get a better perspective of things because it's real time talking with people. 
So I put out the wilderness ramble yesterday talking about my thoughts on why I think removing school chicken is good. And then immediately after I went live and I got to talk about it with people and I get to hear new like, you know, views on why people think it's bad, why people think it's good. So, yeah. Um, If you could go back one year ago and tell yourself something, B. Just one year ago? Uh, over, the, over the last year that's a good question I would say stop doing nightmare <laughs> <laughs> like if I had to relive that year I mean honestly I'm a person that doesn't really regret much I, I really try not to like have regrets in life like everything that happens kind of just happens and there's no mm. point on dwelling or regretting things so I don't really have mm. much to say I think even if something were to change, something else would happen in its place, and then I'd want to change that. And there's like endless amount of just changes I'd want to make. So it probably would be uh, get the mace. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's gonna happen this year, okay. dude. You know what? Uh, when I when I gave my end of the year ramble, or maybe I don't know who I was talking to, whether it was a ramble last year, but I was saying like, hopefully, I will get the mace in. It 20, was me. Was in 2021. It was, was it? Was it yeah. you? Because then I said, this is so cringe, I listened to it today, though. It was, um, I said, yeah, you, you get it December 11th. That's the day I give, I give it to you. And then you're like, December 11th, 2021. <laughs> so, well, yeah, if you, if you head back to Nightmare in six days uh, and get another mace, then that's, that's me correct. Oh, God. Maybe I should do it just for just to make you Maybe. right. There is. Um, who are the three most influential people in your RS career and how did they impact you? Oh, shit. So RuneScape related. Are we talking RuneScape wise or IRL wise? Like RuneScape, 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 RuneScape. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ooh. You know what? I'm going to have to shout out. Say Allo. It's got to be one of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, He doesn't even play anymore. In fact, I think he got hacked recently, which is very upsetting. And and how, how did he impact you? He impacted me by I just thought he was a cool dude. He was the he was the first person I ever subbed to on Twitch. Um he had like he was just a cool dude doing his thing, playing the game efficiently, <laughs> playing his Iron Man. Like and he was I was such a nice guy. I, I would chill in his stream and it's just like, bro, you're just you're just awesome. You're just a fucking gamer. You're unapologetic about it, just gaming away and you're just you're just killing it. And so I, I always Shout looked at his account. Him. I was looking at his account. I was like, "You're a beast." And then, on top of being a skiller and being rank one for a time, like he was also doing the Inferno. He's had a bunch of completions at the Inferno back when it was really rare to have like multiple completions. And he just had like a love for the game, which is really cool. Yeah, shout out to Allo's uh, Red Bull and stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> he was addicted to that, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, uh, number two, number three. Let's think. I got to give a shout out. Oh, dude, I'm going to miss some people, which is just unfortunate, but yeah, that's the brutality of the <laughs> Yeah. Um I got to shout out Hey Jace for being an absolute gamer. The man has really like shown me what consistency is uh playing the game like I'm talking like game wise like the guy got 200 mil all and now he is then, then he's playing the game yeah, he's playing the game like arguably probably even harder now like well i don't know about that but i don't know how many hours he was putting in consistently for skilling but the man pulls out 370 hard caskets every week off stream like off stream he's doing all this shit every single week he's almost at 30,000 hard clues completed and on top of that it's, every other day mad. he does another like thing like he'll spend all day at corp and then he'll spend all day doing mediums then he'll spend all day doing bandos like the guy is just endless and you'd almost feel like aren't you gonna like <laughs> like aren't you gonna kind of burn at this point like you've completed like you're not even getting xp at this point you're just going for the, but he keeps going he pushes the limits of accounts and i think that's just fucking awesome i think he's like a big inspiration for like the game i think i think he's just fucking a really consistent machine at the game and he never stops and it's awesome so. and that's impacted your like play style and the way you approach the game as well 
yeah, it's uh, I I can't even compete, but it's something I aspire to do is to be like very consistent. I've I've nice. been successful in some areas, like with Nightmare. One of my biggest goals was to not give up, to not start changing up my content, just stick with it, do it, and I achieve that. But he is just like always just putting like he's just always consistent always playing always gaining something in collection log xp pets so third person uh let's think i am going to say fat clouds yeah first I'm, one in, first one in the comments guy come on <laughs> i'm gonna say give, fat give clouds because uh well, first of all, I love Fat Cloud's like a brother. He's just is awesome. I love Ian. He's, shout, shout out, yeah, shout out to Fat Cloud. We we've been friends since Iron Clan days before either of us streamed, when I was a noob and he was on the verge of maxing, and uh, just honestly, um, this isn't really like RuneScape related. I, I mean, it's it's Twitch related. Like he has built something. He's built a community around skilling. And his humor and his personality has carried that. But, like, the fact that this man got partnered from Iron Man skilling on Twitch is very, very impressive and often overlooked. I think he's just, like, I don't know. I, I, I think he's just a really awesome dude, a, a, a great example of, like, somebody that just loves the game, loves skilling. He's not trying to... uh I don't know. I just have a lot of I, I I have a lot of good things to say about the guy, and I think uh, he's just funny, funny motherfucker who I love to watch, and um, just got to give a big shout out to him. And he's ranked ten Iron Man. My, you know, my first Fat Cloud stream was definitely an experience. <laughs> I, had, I think it's I, an experience for everyone, especially with pre partner. <laughs> was it pre partner when he was like he, absolutely crazy? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I I had no I I had no idea who Fat Cloud was until uh i saw him in olympus i keep we because i again i just wasn't really paying attention to people that much and uh in the in the little like it's like the public private chat of olympus discord essentially and in there people talk about flat house flat house oh, i was like what's going on here so i go in and <laughs> guy rips the biggest vape i've ever seen <laughs> and like your shout out to you valley yeah bro. it's like just riffs like for like 10 minutes on me just like just in general just like roasting me praising me shouting me out pressing one ripping vapes like, like drinking water like what like just like random stuff like singing tupac like <laughs> yeah okay one <laughs> w one more thing i need to say is he is unapologetically funny like yeah i love it and he's really brutally honest in a funny way like he he plays it off as a joke but man he is probably the biggest influence on me streaming. Um, Great. When he started streaming, like he, he was literally just like, hey, I'm going to start streaming. Insta followed him. Um, you know, Insta rated him with my with my stream. Like I, I would end my stream. I'd, I'd send him a raid like day one or day two of, uh, of his streaming because he was always a pretty active viewer in my stream. So I was like, hey, like, fuck it. He blew up. Yeah. And I saw what he was doing. He was just he was just so honest about everything. Like he was just like funny. Like he would just be like, Yeah, like I want your guys' money. Like I'm streaming this to pay to pay me <laughs> pay me money and let me stream. It was just like it was like too honest to the point where it was just like this is like liberating to watch because it's just like exactly what he's thinking inside. He's just spewing it out. And it actually really influenced how I stream and uh I got to thank him for it because I would always be a little bit, you know, nervous about saying it how it is or, you know, doing certain things. I feel like his influence on me streaming really freed me and really just liberated me and just let me be able to just kind of joke around with my, just not take myself too seriously. So I really appreciate that influence he had over me. Amazing. Shout out to Fat Cards. Get him on the, get him on the cast. He'll be on it very soon. Very soon. Yeah. I want to see his. Uh, I want to see his face in a killer killer issue twenty four. But like, yeah. you, 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 it's literally just like a giant vape cloud. So like, you, you know it's him, but you don't know it's him. If that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, that'd be sick. Just a big fucking cloud. 
or his cloud like covers the entire background we'll just have that like or it's like screen. a it's a it, like it's his face but then the cloud is just like a one just a number one <laughs> so Whereas, uh well i, I actually well, want to ask you what, do you what did you think about that uh piece that killer fishy made i mean it's my uh uh it's mine it's too incredible, it's mine it? too yeah in fact i was it's gonna ask you isn't it I, I was gonna ask you if you wanted i could uh I could clear out the background and just have it be you. I could send you a little Yo, file. Yo, send, send that immediately. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll have to do it manually, but it's very easy. So. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, that'd be lovely. That'd be good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that was really good vision to have that because, like, you were um, you were like daring me concept and like, oh, because you, you have to have everyone for the picture and stuff. So, yeah. Like, oh, it's going to be like this, and I'm like, it's going to be fucking sick. But um, yeah, it would be that sick. It's like fucking <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> it's insane. I was so pleased with it. I'm really happy. It's a, again, total passion project. Just, I want these things because I love, I love doing what I'm doing. This it's, it that that stuff is really important, not just for like the community that you've built, because you want to you want to give people an opportunity to contribute in any type of way, and um, it's it's not selling out, it's giving value to your community. So I, I'm, you know, sorry, I'm roboting again. You're good. Uh, it's it's like yeah, it's like giving value to you to your community, which is just a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, but it's it's important for you, like a landmark of the past year that you've built, a, a, like you've you've built something and it's just beautiful. So yeah, it, uh, definitely get definitely work on the po the poster and the display and uh, that'd be good. So yeah, um, I'm I, I just I love it. It's great. It's uh, I, I showed it to uh, showed it to my wife. She's like, oh cool. <laughs> that's, that's all she cares <laughs> oh, about. Cool, it. It's yeah. like all right. Oh, you know that picture of me. You, you, you know that picture of me. You took of me from my from my work pass. So like, yeah, not someone else drew it. It's like how? It's like don't ask questions. <laughs> let me play my game. Yeah. Now and, um, and 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 unfortunately, before you move on, uh, I, I wasn't able to please every guest. Unfortunately, um, one of the things was like I'm, I'm, I'm paying for this artist's time, and one of the things like I would really love every guest to be happy with it. But I just couldn't, I couldn't, and I'm also not going to waste the artist's time. Like, I, I couldn't, like, feasibly just ask every person with the update pics, like, hey, how are you liking this? Like, my, like, personally, if you zoom up on the picture, my eyes are brown in the picture. But my eyes are blue in real life. And the oh, other, no. other other people's eyes weren't the exact color that, you know, are actually theirs. Some people yeah, had a little bit of issues with what they were wearing and stuff. But it's just. I, I look like um Dracula in, like, I look quite, uh. <laughs> yeah there's, you know there's what i mean i'm staring into your soul type vibes the, there's gonna be little things that people just can't be pleased with no but I, I love it because it's it's part of like a collection of legacy like yeah you gotta, you gotta look past like I, what it is exactly what, what what in total i love it yeah it's i, I see it for it it's absolutely beautiful that's awesome yeah um what's one question that i want to ask you that you want to ask what's a question that i want to be asked yeah that no, that no one has, no, no one's asked you. Uh, damn, these are like, I'm not used to this. I'm not used um, to being asked yeah, actual almost, like inspired almost, questions. I had, a, I had a long train ride up there, so. I think the question I would like to be asked is. I guess more, I, I guess a question that nobody really asks that often is like, are you happy? Mm. And I feel like this is a really deep question that goes beyond like RuneScape, goes beyond anything else is like the human experience is to like be happy, you know? And that's very subjective, but there's, there are ways to like that objectively make humans happy generally. And uh, I think, I, th I think I would like to be asked that question because I, f I feel like I am very happy with like how my life's going. And, uh, there's a lot of risk, you know, building a stream and building a uh, YouTube and doing this kind of stuff. Cause it's like, you don't know how much you're going to make and you don't know like where this is going to go. You can't see the future, uh, as clearly as like a job or a career where you're, you know, your salary and you know, like what your obligations are and stuff where you're streaming. It's just like you, you choose what you're doing. Like, what are you going to do? So mm -hmm. I think a question I'd like to be asked is like, are you happy? And to answer that? Yes, I am happy. There's things like there's always improvements to make, but I am, if I were to look back three years ago, 
before I started streaming. I, I'm hitting my three year streaming anniversary, just content creation anniversary on January eighth. Wow, which is uh, pretty insane because three years ago I would have never expected to have gotten to this point. So it's just that makes me happy is something that I'm working on, something that I'm passionate about is growing, and just in general I'm just really happy with just life in general. Disregard RuneScape, disregard anything. I'm life's going very well. No, I'm not sick, perfectly healthy, I'm financially secure, you know, as of right now, and I just feel in a good place. So that's great, man. That was it. Okay. Now I want to ask you, are you happy? Um I could be happy, but at the moment, yeah, I am. So I'm roboting again. Yeah. Um I I could be happier, but yeah, I am happy. Yeah. And that's a good thing that you can be happier. Like it, it's good to like yeah. see a vision of like how you would like your life to play out. Yeah. Last year last year when I was around the t around this time last year, it was it was not good. Um and then uh this year wasn't the best either just real life wise but for me i feel like uh things are turned around near the end of the year yeah which is all good so uh yeah but we keep we keep going we, uh, we keep this pointy clicky game yeah. and uh, have a lot of fun that's life life's gonna have up and ups and downs so just gotta yeah. take it all in i guess how old are you if you don't mind asking i'm 26 i'll be turning 27 in june yeah uh. Where do you want to be when you're 30? Uh, I still want to be doing this. I want to be doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Nice. Fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> I mean, really, like, you never really know. I always ask this question to guests, like, where will you, like, where will streamers be? I, I generally ask, like, streamers, like, do you think you'll still be creating content 10 years from now? Like, seriously, like, where, where's the game going to be? Where's streaming going to be? Where's Twitch? Where's YouTube going to be? Like, those are serious questions that like who knows who knows when but i am very confident i will still be playing this game in five years and i will still be creating content i don't see it going nice. anywhere so, yeah well i look forward to continue watching what you put out and uh i mean maybe i'll do a ramble between now and then yeah <laughs> see okay I, I want well first of all i gotta just say i want bi-yearly rent I, I want i want two rambles a year from you i know you're just two, doing two a year. i want more two a year. i want more. Maybe, i mean all right uh <laughs> okay i i okay you by, know what i want this, go on you've already given your ramble this year correct uh technically Somewhat. yes you know what i want i want to i want a bank video and i know you kind of already have like shared your bank stuff but i want a bank video talking about it's just basically another excuse for a ramble i'm making my neck my my, <laughs> my yearly bank video next week so I love watching what, bank what, videos. What day are you dropping? Oh, uh, I'm not positive. Probably like December 11th or 12th ish. Okay. I might I might schedule my drop at Christmas Day. Fuck it. Hell yeah, that would be a nice Christmas present for me. Yeah, I'll send that through. I mean, I'm I'm just looking at it now. There's there's that's actually quite a few cool things in here that I haven't shown people yet. I would love to see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, um. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh. What do you think? Three hours, three hours and change. I think. Uh... Happy anniversary! <laughs> Woo, happy birthday! Thanks. Bro. I need like uh, I need like party poppers. I need like uh, <laughs> balloons. I wh where's the yeah? I need like blue party hats. Um, yeah, those type of things. <laughs> You've been literally like for the majority of this cast, uh, completely on the opposite end of this agility course. But I keep seeing your green name pop up. So oh, I'm, I'm off. I'm off now. I'm doing. Oh, okay. just did some contracts. Because so. <laughs> I was like. You're just like right on the edge of like, we're just barely seeing each other. Vaddy, I got to say, man, you're, you're a good friend of mine and it's always just a pleasure talking. I just feel like we almost, I don't know. I, I feel like we know each other like on a personal level at this point, And it's like, we've never even met in real life, but it's just cool. Basically. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't, I haven't jumped on voice with you since the last cast uh and then we just sent another three hours you, yeah you, you know you have you know you have like friends like that where you don't chat too much like i pop into the stream a couple of times or into discord or whatever but you don't chat for a while and then you just jump in and it's like yeah just yeah it's just like just old times it. it's just yeah. like that uh, but i'm like that this is like a this could be seen as a bad trait but i'm very i'm very bad at like 
continually keeping up with everybody like consistently or often however you know people define often but uh like even in real life i, I gotta get i gotta get better at that too yeah it's, it's everyone everyone text your mom everyone there uh, everyone go everyone go out and she's doing and your dad yeah your dad, dad needs yeah. love too yeah yeah shout out to the, the dads we're we're, uh, we're out here yeah waking up at four in the morning well batty it was an absolute pleasure as always Yo, thank, thank thank you for inviting me um my pleasure shout out, shout out to you and the cast and uh here's for another year maybe uh you know it's again less about me but maybe it's a it's a yearly thing we we stop and stop and think about the last year and set our goals yeah didn't ask that so yeah let's just right 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 off the bottom um goals for next year where like if we if we get to this year, this time next year uh where would you need to be for you to be uh, as happy as you are now okay let's see that i want to be on episode 100 so this is a big <laughs> big thing to, to to claim but i would like to be on episode once you hit like 97 and just like drop three in a week it's like yeah what <laughs> I could. In fact, there might be two Sebe casts coming up in the next couple of weeks. Two in one week, so we'll see. But um, this year, I mean, I missed a few weeks. I missed probably like three where I didn't have a cast, but it, it all balanced out. Um, that That's where I'd like to be uh, cast-wise. RuneScape-wise, I'd like to um, hopefully have completed next. Hopefully have uh, some Raids 3 items. Again, I'm just completely assuming it's going to be cool listening back to this in a year from now because I'm just going to be like, you're so dumb. Raid 3 is not even out yet, you dumbass. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see um, Pole 76 come out. I'd like to see clues be rebalanced in a nice way. And yeah, that's pretty much it. What about you? I know I know we're um, wrapping up, but have you checked Torvo on Seracnus? Like, does it affect it? Yeah, it affects it because you can use the helmet and then you can switch to a Fury. So, nice. so you maintain the same max hit, um, but you get like 15 extra mage uh, defense, which is really nice cool. at Seracna. So it's like, it depends. Like you can actually gain a max hit, but you'd have to wear like tacits or something um, with the helmet because you need like yeah. a plus four. Or actually, I think you only need plus three to gain another max hit with my current setup. So I don't know. I'll mess around with it a little bit. But uh, yeah. it is exciting. Um, yeah. So for me, I think it's similar goals. Um, I want at least elite combat achievements done. Um, I want next done, and then I think what I'd like to try and do is make a push for top page. Um, but there's there's no guarantees because I might get stuck on next. I might get stuck on raid three. And I might really enjoy that. So um, those are the, those are the two big things that are coming out, which I'm definitely doing. Um, what, what what skills would you train in order to get that top page? Uh, Slayer and uh, Agility. Very nice. They're just they're just the two best skills to do on Iron Man right now. Yeah. Um, just not even a question. Agility is probably the best skill to do on Iron Man right now, uh, just because of how broken Scepter is. Yeah, with everything real. else. Um, yeah. Uh, shout out. I've got a couple of shout outs if you don't mind. Yeah. No, I was gonna, uh, I was just about to ask. I want three shout outs from you, unless. You're oh, cool. Mind. Yeah. No. Um, shout out to uh, Lelador. Shout out to Iron Cub. We've made it up now. It's very nice. Um, shout if if you know the history of that, then you know that's significant. Um, shout out to I'm on a PC. Fucking hilarious Twitter to follow. Uh, really good mind on on that guy. Um, shout out to JYHY or, or Jai Hai, um, who has beaten your Seracnus. I know. It's just, it's I know. Just, God so damn it. Shout, shout out! Shout out to Finland as a country uh, <laughs> for just like creating gamers. Uh, <laughs> basically. For real. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out to you, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for creating this uh, this this content. And um, yeah, here's here's to many more years. Really appreciate uh, you inviting me back on. And um, yeah, love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we will have your Twitter in the uh, description. I can't remember if there's any other links you'd like shared. Just YouTube. That's it. And uh, yeah, Discord if you want to chat. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The... Of course, your YouTube and yeah, Twitter. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, go for it. Okay, um, guys, thank you guys for listening to the one year. Here's to uh, next year. You know, here's to here's to the next uh, fifty guests. Hopefully. Oh, uh, buy a t-shirt, buy a display, <laughs> buy buy a mug, buy uh, underpants, buy the um, baby onesie. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> there's still you, there's, you, there's still a lot you know of there's, there's, a, there's a there's a there's an Olympus um, onesie, like a baby. Like really? Baby, oh, wait, uh, yeah. have I seen that? Was that what? I know Jack had a kid recently, right? Is that what yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout, shout out to Jack. Oh, more, more dads of Olympus, please. Um, but uh, yeah, like there's like a Dids onesie. Wow. Dids runs, Dids runs the Olympus merch shop, and he's like got every, he's got the logo on like everything. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Yeah, I'm yeah, still working to, on the whole merch it. ideas. I'm trying to trying to get it all settled, but it should be in the next few weeks. It should be all good to go. So cool. Yeah. I, I really appreciate. I really appreciate talking to you at just all the time. So um, thanks again. Guys, next week, this is the this is the surprise I haven't told anybody, and it's not even fully confirmed. So please don't roast me if it doesn't happen by next. Drumroll, please. Gentle Tractor will be on the. Ca I know this isn't even a, this isn't even coming as a surprise for you, uh, Batty, because I already told you right before. But my Gen mind is still blown. Gentle Tractor, the Reddit king of just suggestions. I have asked him, I have DM'd him uh, to be on the cast, and he is looking forward to it. We haven't set up an exact time yet, but um, just expect it, uh, you know. And then, um, of course, we're having Puggin on the cast uh, the following week. And I have currently been in talks with Dino XX, who I will also be having on the cast this month. So lots, oh. lots of cool guests, lots more as well. I have a huge list of people I want to get on in 2022, so... Thank you guys for continually listening to the Sebe cast. It really means a lot. All the comments, all the support, all the likes. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.